Okay, good morning. I'm uh, Commissioner Ed Rothstein. It's Thursday, November 3rd. I believe we have a pretty full agenda for uh, open session this morning. Can't believe it's November. Just remember to change your clocks uh, this weekend. I know that, and hopefully everybody had a, a healthy Halloween, although it a bit wet. Um, let's, as we always do, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence before we begin. <clears throat> Okay, as we always do, let's start with uh, Priority Carolyn. I believe I have one proclamation this morning. Commissioner Boucher. Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. We have a nice full house today. Thanks for attending. I want to start off, as always, welcoming new employees to the county. We have Lindsay Pereira, Collection Specialist, Collections <laughs> Office, Farrell Solomon, Enterprise GIS Analyst, Technology Services, Kyle Thornton, Emergency Communications Specialist, Public Safety, and Christopher Stately, public safety technician. I was wondering if Mr. Swam has anything up here to share with the public. Oh, I went out, here you go, for Halloween. I went out to the Career and Technology Center for first time I went into the new uh, side that's been uh, built. And they had um, their big country breakfast. I'm always about the food. The kids did a wonderful job. They also did pumpkin decorations. There's some of the work that the students did. It was a very festive environment. It's very in important for the students to have us come in and support them financially. So there was donations to be involved with this breakfast. And that money goes to help the students compete in the state and also the National Skills Olympics. And this is very important to me because in 1985, I was part of the Vocational Skills Olympics. I was the number one student welder in the state of Maryland and competed nationally. So to be able to give back to the community and support these students out there who are going to be the future of our county and the jobs and the leadership and the businesses, it's a tremendous honor to be part of that. I believe I even seen their former controller, Rob Burke, out there. We have a photo of Mr. Burke. I don't know if I sent that, but I ran into him at the entrance. And it's always good to see our former employees here at other events being supportive. Do we have anything else, Mr. Swam? I had a meeting. Oh, I have Is that it? All right. Oh, here we go. Here we have. This is Dwight Amos, or landfill manager. I want this slid in here. I had the Department of Public Works come to my office this week to discuss something that's on our agenda, and I told Dwight Amos he could sit in the commissioner's chair and be the commissioner for about five minutes. He was a, a pretty good boss to me. I just want to express my sincere appreciate, appreciation to this man here, Dwight Amos. He's been instrumental in helping us get a grasp and understanding on the needs of our landfill and I can't give him enough praise. I believe he's been a county employee for over 42 years. He's a wealth of knowledge, and I just want to share my appreciation to everyone in the Department of Public Works. Thank you very much. And he graduated from the Francis Scott Key High School. There so you go. Should be no question as to his competence and <laughs> intelligence level. Just saying. Sorry, go ahead. Who are you talking? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Are you biased? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what's your name? Uh, Commissioner Weaver. Okay, first of all, I just uh, you mentioned the tech center, and Commissioner Rusty and I did stop by the tech center one day to uh, look at some of the uh, <clears throat> things they've done. It is beautiful what they have out there, and I think that's going to be uh, uh, just add on to the asset we have in Carroll County. And uh, we were at the hospital last week for the Stroke Smart program uh, after session. Uh, really uh, interesting what's going on with a, uh, in, at the hospital with that program. Uh, they had a little uh, magnets they were handing out on, you know, the symptoms and what, uh, how it works. And um, it, it really, uh, I did put it on the refrigerator just to look at it because if you, you can get the first few hours to get help uh, after a stroke, it can be a major difference. And uh, so anyway, that was a very good program. I'll let uh, you talk about the proclamation you presented here in a few minutes on it and uh, as I said this is uh, after Halloween we do change time again here so I hate that but anyway um, it's getting, being getting rid of uh, and it, we're, we're going Apparently back they're so. working on it right yeah. I think it passed my understanding is it passed so we'll fall back this year we'll spring forward in the spring and then that's it suppose it, I think <sighs> I hope anyway cool Okay, Sorry. that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm just hoping they did. 
I don't know, about six years ago, we tried to get Carol not to do it, just Carol. <laughs> and somebody told us, no, you can't do that. Commissioner Frazier, good morning. <laughs> good I'm morning. just kind of going with this. Um, don't have much to add. The be smart for the smoke, the stroke, smoke. For the stroke. <laughs> That's the first the sign. Was, was, <laughs> don't ask me to repeat a, a phrase. Don't do that. <laughs> was well worth going over there and, and you know, hearing from the, the people at the hospital about strokes and so forth. And, and what Commissioner Weaver already said, having someone get help within the first, <clears> I think it's with three, three and four and a half hours, is extremely important to the rehabilitation and how much they can recover from that. So it's very, very important. And one thing that they emphasized was, if you think someone is having a stroke, if you think, just go. Go to the hospital, have them check you out. If you're not having a stroke, it's fine. They, don't, they won't yell at you. If you are, it might, say, it might make your recovery just be so much better. So it's very, very worthwhile, to, you know, just to go. There's a lot of people are afraid to go. I think I'm having a heart attack, stroke, whatever. Now I'm not going to go. And it's too late. If you think something's going on, go to the hospital. Go to the emergency room. Find out. Get, get the facts. Do not lay down and take a nap. No. No. And that's no. What, that would be oh, that's what people that's do what that. Because they oh, I think I'll lay down, take a nap, and I feel better when I wake up. Okay. Right. Possibly not. On a personal note, as many of you know, I still coach. Um, you know, in, in the afternoons, I coach uh, middle school cross country. We just wrapped up our season over at Gerstel Academy. I have to say I had the top runner in our league, Ben Miller. I have to put his name out there. He won every single race this year. And not only did he win every single race, most of the time you couldn't even see the person coming in second because that's how far ahead he was. His closest race, the kid was 24 seconds behind him, which is a good distance. Most of the time he finished over a minute, minute and a half ahead of second place person. Tremendous runner for an eighth grader. Really looking for great things for him from the, at the high school level. And that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner uh, Wentz. Was that due to the coaching? I didn't want to say that out loud well, since you brought it up. <laughs> he, he had the bicycle. Right, that, that's know, all I have. Just a, yeah. uh, good, <laughs> good morning. i uh, been riding ambulances for 47 years. I've taken a lot of stroke patients to a lot of places. Mm -hmm. And what Carroll Hospital Center is doing is amazing as always. So kudos uh, to all of the folks over there. Uh, not only is it the hospital, but it's, um, it's, the, um, it's the folks that are serving on the um, – What's the name of the the that dots in charge of Fox? Um, partnership. The, the what? Partnership for partnership healthier for Carol. Healthier Carol. Thank you, <laughs> Celine. Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody that was involved uh, with that or is involved. So thank you to all. Uh, here is your Charles Carroll Community Center update for the morning. Uh, since we were up there last, things are really changing. Uh, this is inside the, the, the new auditorium, or the new gymnasium, sorry. Uh, serious, serious into drywalling and getting ready to paint. Uh, keep going, Chris, what else you got? Uh, it was interesting because for the first time in probably the history of Silver Run, there was a crane in the air two weeks ago. Um, and it, it apparently created a ruckus. Were you involved in that ruckus, Keith? Okay, all right. Because <laughs> typically where there's a ruckus, and you're involved, just saying. Anyway, uh, the crane came in and put that air handling system down, uh, and it apparently, uh, again, had a lot of spectators up there because folks have never seen anything like that in Silver Run. Uh, what else you got? There's the uh, – you guys are all familiar with this because we took the tour. There weren't walls there when we were there. There are walls there now. And then finally on the outside, you know, there's the – multi-purpose rooms uh, this is yeah keep going Chris the next one here's the um, here's the wall that's outside that's going to have a bench on it the flag poles are going to be there and uh, all of that brick is from the old Charles Carroll school nice. so we're we're putting in as much history uh, from the old school as we can when you walk into the lobby you'll be walking on the old gymnasium floor from Charles Carroll as you approach the display case that will have uh, a lot of items from the old school so we're, we're putting in as much history there as we can and uh, I know a lot of members of the community have been going up there they're anxious to see it still looking probably Kirk is gonna probably hit me for this but I think I think maybe April ish we're looking 
hopefully March or April, but it's coming along real well. Uh, and you know it's coming along when I was able to pull right up to the front door and park the other day. And mm -hmm. actually, either today or yesterday, they were going to put the first level of blacktop up there. So um, really, I want to say kudos to everybody again. Um, I know you probably get tired of hearing me say this, but this is one of the legacies that I will leave, uh, leaving this office. And Dick, for your purposes, today's count is 31 and 4. I always want to give that to you. Um, he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, this is going to be an amazing addition to the community up there, and not just that community, but as Commissioner Rostein has said many times, it's all about Carroll. And um, there will there'll be people there from far and near uh, utilizing this impressive building. So thank you to especially Kirk Engel. He'll be in here later on today because uh, there's a couple items that we have to address uh, but to everybody that was involved in making <coughs> this become a reality. So uh, other than that, kudos to Doug Brown and DPW yesterday. They had a good winter weather coordination meeting. Uh, we do it better than anybody in the state when it comes to snow removal and being prepared for winter weather. So kudos to the folks there. And um, stay safe out there. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend. Yeah, so stay is. safe out there. Uh, as you said last week, leaves are coming down, slippery surfaces on the road. Uh, we had several accidents uh, in the past two, three days. Some of them were, <coughs> one of them was pretty bad. So uh, slow down and um, respect those that are out there on the road that are on our ambulances, fire engine, and police cars. No, I appreciate Back it. Thank you. And um, one of the, uh, you know, deeds and not just words to live by is don't take yourself so serious take the job you do very seriously and um, I had the opportunity this past week to attend the Good Scout uh, breakfast over at Howard County and our Good Scout uh, breakfast will be in December um, you know, and I uh, look forward to attending that but the Good <laughs> Scout in Howard County uh, for many years was uh, emceed by a gentleman named Dick Story. And I think, uh, Chris, you have that picture, there you go, of Dick and I. And many folks in the community know Dick. Uh, he was part of Carroll County, he was part of Howard County. He lives down in Berlin now. Uh, he did not emcee it this year. Um, he has been a mentor of mine for many, many years. He's going through some very challenging times. Uh, his wife basically says day by day um, and but he has that that smile and that just really warm warm heart so he's, he's a very special man uh, and leader and mentor to everybody that he's come across so and an incredible voice an incredible voice <laughs> he had that booming voice yeah. so yeah pretty special mm -hmm. uh, another mentor and friend um, is I believe somebody's birthday was uh, the other day uh, yesterday maybe Chris do you have something we can share oh there he is who's the guy with hair wait no go way. back bring it back Chris Chris I didn't see that okay wow. now let's just see how we can you haven't changed at all get this out. <laughs> okay we're gonna get there just bear with me seriously okay <laughs> A little bit more. Seriously, this this is priority, Carol. This Seriously, is priority. Uh huh. I haven't seen that much hair. I mean, look at that. Look at that. That so just means we love you. That is the Francis Scott Key. So I want everybody in the room, you know, and the thousands of viewers, that I choose to cut my hair like this. <laughs> Thank you all very much. You haven't it's, aged a bit. It's so special, I have it on my block. That's not so. the question. Five eight. I know. <laughs> there ain't no 5'8". <laughs> they had platform shoes back then. I remember them. <laughs> so, yeah, they did. They so, uh, so a happy belated birthday Thanks. to our friend and colleague. I'll respond to mentor. that in the form of a question. Thank you? Yeah, <laughs> we're not sure about that. So, Okay. Um, Chris, you can take that down because on a yeah, more please. serious note, uh, <laughs> I have the opportunity to provide a proclamation um, it's called Operation Green Light for Veterans Week. And Secretary uh, Owings and Deputy Secretary Finn <clears throat> and I were together a couple weeks ago. 
and we were talking about this and how to continue to promote this across Maryland. This is a national uh, opportunity to recognize our veterans leading into Veterans Day uh, on the 11th, uh, and we'll talk more about that. You know, we could talk more about that next week. But Operation Green Light, and we're going to light up our um, uh, county building um, starting on the 7th and go through the 13th. And I have a proclamation. That's what the lighting is going to look like. I'm very impressed the partnership with our facilities guys uh, in making this happen um, because there's a lot of technical pieces to making it look green and now having the ability to make it look whatever color we do want it. So uh, what I'd like is to get maybe the three of you come on up here at the table. <coughs> uh, Bill? Elaine? Yeah. And uh, I'll take a minute reading the proclamation. I know we have a team behind you because it takes a village to take care of our veterans, and we know that. And Bill Nash is the chairman of the uh, Veterans Advisory uh, Committee where... Um, both Commissioner Weaver and I truly enjoy participating um, in, and uh, you know, you definitely make a difference. So, yeah, Jack, why don't you, yeah, thanks. Why don't you come on up and I'll just pull a chair? That's okay. That. Yeah, that'll work. Thanks. <laughs> <coughs> okay, the proclamation. Thanks, Dick. Um, Operation Green Light for Veterans Week, November 7th, 2022, November 13th, 2022. There's a whole lot of whereas is, which I'm not going to be saying, but that's okay. I'll start off with whereas. The residents of Carroll County have great respect, admiration, and the utmost gratitude for all of the men and women who selflessly served our country and this community in the armed forces. And the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And Carroll County seeks to honor these individuals who have paid the high price for freedom by placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all. And veterans continue to serve our community in the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, religious groups, civil service, and by functioning as Carroll County veteran service or officers in 29 states to help fellow former service members access more than two, $52 billion in federal health, disability, and compensation benefits each year. And approximately 200,000 service members transition to civilian communities annually, an estimated 20% increase of service members will transition to civilian life in the near future. And studies indicate that 44 to 72 percent of service members experience high levels of stress during transition from military to civilian life and active military service. Members transitioning from military service are at high risk for suicide during the first year after military service. And the National Association of Counties encourages all counties, parishes, and boroughs to recognize Operation Green Light for veterans and the Board of Carroll County Commissioners appreciates the sacrifices of our uni United States military personnel and believes specific recognition should be granted. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Carroll County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim Monday, November 7th through Sunday, November 13th, uh, 2022, as Operation Green Light for Veterans Week. And... Uh, it's about deeds and not words. Mm. It's about action. <coughs> and you show that every day um, in what you do. So uh, I just want to say from me to you, I appreciate all that you're doing um, and also all that still needs to be done. And we don't cower away from it and we don't hide behind it. We hit it on front and, and center. So uh, I, I do appreciate that because we still have a whole lot of work to do. Um, you know, and I've talked about my endeavors, um, and I just, whatever you need from us, you just keep us in mind and, and let us know. So with that said, does Dick? Well, nobody does it better than Carroll County. You guys are part of that, why it happens in Carroll. Eight years ago, I, I was just elected 
back in the office here, Mike Mad Dog Sater was in, I think the first week, and Weaver, my your office now. And I'm like, and Mike and I grew up together. We knew each other very well. And he made me promise to keep moving with what he had started with the Veterans Council. And it was a, just an infant organization at that time, or advisory council. And uh, he uh, no, he's no longer with us, but uh, we have carried on. I think what I promised him we would do, and uh, you guys have made a big been a big part of that to get it to this point. We have the Veterans Celebration in Carroll County. We have a lot of things going on here that are just uh, phenomenal in Carroll. And I know uh, uh, <coughs> Secretary Owens and uh, <coughs> Secretary Flynn recognize Carroll County and what they've done uh, for veterans here in the county. And you guys, I just want to say thank you and all the events you have and being part of Post 200. I uh, uh, do see a lot of those events, maybe more than some of the others, but thank you i really appreciate and a lot of credit honestly before i pass it on doug howard commissioner doug howard you know in initiating the veterans council <coughs> frank valenti uh besides just being the chair giving up his space over in social services ed kramer uh i mean great friends and just uh colleagues that have stepped up to make a difference that initiated this along with mad dog and and you so any other comments if I may, I want to thank you all for your leadership in this. I know there's a lot of other people behind you as this seems to happen in these situations. You all have provided leadership to the community. I hear time and time again from veterans how Carroll County is a place they want to live, and that's reflective of our community's values. I also want to give thanks to Commissioner Rothstein for his advocacy and leadership on this issue. He brings a lot to the table, someone who's experienced what you've experienced, and that leadership produces dividends and how we are as a county and our quality of life thanks to everyone You're well I can't say enough that's not already been <clears throat> said uh, and I promised you dick right after you had that meeting with mad dog that I would make sure that I supported you and your efforts mm -hmm. back in 2014 when we first started this adventure that you and I have been on uh, and we we do we do that uh, listen I wasn't in the military uh, I had a choice back in 1979 and went the other way into public safety, uh, but I appreciate the sacrifices that all of you have made uh, over the years. Coming from a paramilitary organization, uh, I understand it uh, because I've seen the sacrifices that my brothers and sisters have made too. So to all of you, uh, if it was up to me, we'd have the green light on 24-7 uh, because we're here because of what you all have done for us and we can't ever forget that so uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect we haven't always agreed over the last eight years on things um, Dick and I but um, I, I respect the fact that he is a veteran and then when Ed came on board uh, the respect I have for him is is uh, beyond uh, what folks can imagine so to everyone uh, we can't we can't stop. We got to continue. Uh, I saw. I saw. Uh, my wife showed me a Facebook post last night from a veteran in Tawny Town that is was asking for. Is there anybody around that I can just talk to and play cards with? Mm -hmm. That they moved here. So uh, I'm pretty sure someone else saw that as well, and they're on that. If not, I'm going to forward that. But that's what we need to do. And that's what this kind of thing is <coughs> out to light so that folks do understand that. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. And we'll, I'll continue to thank you till my dying day. And it's always good to see you, neighbor. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Dennis, did you want to chime in or just? <coughs> I wasn't <even> talking. <laughs> huh? He's choked up. Oh. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, it's just. I mean, do you want you want a hug? I, <laughs> I mean, I, I I'm not sure what's going on here. I the will say, thing. okay, <laughs> got touched by the. <clears throat> he did. I will, I will say, having grown up in a military family, my father was in the service, and I see the sacrifices that were made by him and things he had to do when he, he was in the Coast Guard when he went on ship and so forth. Mm -hmm. He was gone for a month or six weeks or a couple months at a time and come back, and the sacrifices have to be made. I do appreciate everything that the, that the military has done for this country. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, Bill, it's up to you now. 
sparkle us with your words. Um, on behalf of the Veterans Advisory Council, all the veterans of Carroll <laughs> County and the American Legions in <coughs> Carroll County, uh, we'd like to thank the commissioners for your support, continued support, and for the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Anything else? You guys? Wayne? Please. I'm Jack Powersox. I'm post commander of Post 200 over in Hampstead. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you people for this because 55 years ago when we started coming up with Vietnam, we didn't get anything like this. Right. And it's great to see it. It took, took too long, I'm sure you can agree, but we do appreciate it. The majority of our members are Vietnam veterans and they appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Elaine? Well, I only spent 30 years in the Marine Corps, but if I could have done more, I would have. Um, but I really have appreciated what I have seen in this county, what we do for veterans. And I am now on the Maryland's <coughs> Veterans Commission down in Annapolis, and, uh, and I see what they're doing at that level for the for veterans. And if we ever need any help at this, at this level, we can, we can get it. We can get some help. And like I said, we're working on that uh, next uh, veterans home here in the, awesome. in the county. And it's, it's moving forward. It is. And, um, and now, yeah. because of Secretary yes. Owens, he's put me on the, uh, we're doing a, the, we've never had a woman's memorial or, or monument in this county right. uh, to speak of. And, and he put me on that committee. So now we're working on that. And that's going to be a long haul because you have to fundraiser, get a designer, get an architect and all that. You know, and of course, one of the things we were talking about maybe putting it at that, uh, at the Sykesville Veterans Home as an entranceway or something like that. But that'd be cool. That would be nice. But uh, we want to put it someplace where everybody would see it. So maybe it'll probably be in the Capitol area in Annapolis, I guess. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things we're doing for veterans in this county. So you're, you're talking about a memorial for the state or for the county? For the state. Oh, for the state. Yeah, for the state. Okay. A state, because they don't have a woman's uh, yeah. monument of yeah. any kind. And uh, so now, uh, Governor Hogan, he yeah. has signed a proclamation right. to have that done. So we'll be getting some funds from that level, but uh, there's a lot of, a lot of roads to, and we got Jan Struggs, who everybody's know that name, who had something to do with starting the Vietnam Memorial down in uh, D.C. He's gonna be on, on helping us on this committee to help <coughs> us with all the struggles that's ahead, because he's been there and done that, so. So we're doing a lot of things and I appreciate what we what we're doing here in this county it's and just great. um no I appreciate and just uh, for the good of the group <clears throat> the veterans home that you mentioned uh, and I've said a few times 65 percent funded by feds 35 by state zero by the county which I like very much uh, the workforce um, has the opportunity to come from the county especially from the community college when it comes to uh, nurses and uh, other uh, staff um, it'll be about 140 beds, about a $165 million facility. That's going to be down Slacks Road. Um, and, you know, talking to the secretary, it'd be great to do some groundbreaking with at least A&E, Architecture and Engineering, uh, by April. So uh, we're, I know, also talking to others in the Fed about um, additional funds for that. So great initiative and uh yeah that's good stuff so i didn't know if you were going to mention about the another dedication of a road for colonel weber oh. that's coming up here on uh, saturday yes <clears throat> yeah and it, um, deputy uh, secretary uh, fenn and i are going to attend that uh, for him I, and so will uh commissioner weaver with a proclamation okay good. Now. good yeah it's pretty special and uh and that goes out to everyone as well roads bridges have the opportunity to uh, dedicate them in memory of those that have served and others that have been put into uh, honorable positions given their lives. Uh, everyone who thanks me for my service, I turn around and thank them for giving me a reason to serve. And that's what this is really all about. So, um, okay, why don't we uh, get a happy snap? I think we got a whole lot of folks. Uh, like I said, it takes a village. So, Celine, why don't you bring your team up as well? And while us stand back here you want to introduce have. them maybe and talk a little bit about what i don't know nah no nah. Okay. Nah. Nah. nah sounds like my granddaughter nah nah all four of you up here in the okay. center <clears throat> yeah thank you yeah 
Yeah, you, you and Bill, just in the middle. Whoops. Gina! <laughs> I was over here. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Gina! Yeah. Are we lopsided now? We got too many people over there. <laughs> I don't want to use. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Very nice. Thank you. Yes, sir. Nope. See it's you on soon. you. Yep. See you soon. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. We'll get there. Thanks. Hey, that is one of the things I feel sorry to say. Thank you very much. Okay, just. um. three. <laughs> Real quick before we get into the order of business, and I, I apologize. Um, just one other, um, Chris, you got that photo? I apologize. So this is a woman, Silva, um, forgot her last name. She just passed away uh, out of Pikesville. She was part of Schindler's List and uh, was a Holocaust survivor. Mm. Um, and I had the honor of having her on Fort Meade, having a conversation. I didn't even know this picture was taken. It was uh, in the Baltimore Sun this morning. So I'm getting these calls about picture in the Baltimore Sun, and I'm like, okay, what is this about? And uh, she was, I think, one of about 1,200 from my recollection of Schindler's List um, that went through hell and back. And, um, yeah, she passed, I think, just either yesterday or day before. I just want to share that again special so thanks Chris um, <clears throat> let's start with mr. Hine financial assurance plan required by Maryland environment the FAP public hearing. Huh? This, this is public the, hearing. It's the public hearing it's the public hearing I apologize you're right no. so who's gonna start it mr. Burke you want to start it or Chris I can start it yeah. sure Good morning, commissioners. So uh, we were before you last week to talk about the financial assurance plan for the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit that we have. And as we discussed last week, this is essentially an accounting exercise where um, we document for the state that uh, we are, um, that the county is providing the funds necessary to meet our permit requirements. And so we went last week through um, the details of that, and then that the uh, state requirements are that we ha hold a public hearing, and then you approve the financial assurance plan for our, uh, submission to the state for their review and approval as well. So today, um, we're here to hear any public comments, and as usual, um, I guess we would hold the record open for 10 days, and then we would be back before you requesting your approval of the plan. Okay. Before going to public, do we have any questions? I'll move the board of well, Carroll we'll County. Have, we haven't had the hearing no, yet. We have the public hearing. Oh, no. We have the hearing. Right. That's it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> do we have any questions? And you. then see if there's anybody in the public to discuss. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody on the phone, Chris? I have no callers. Okay. Now, with that said, unless there's any questions. No, I don't have any. I think that. No. Presentation was good. It was, you know, so, yeah. uh, I had no questions after I reviewed it yeah. as well. So I think we're good to go. So, okay. so if you want to go with it, Weaver, now, now, go ahead. now would be go the ahead. time. Now, now yeah. it's your turn. <laughs> go ahead, Chris or Dick. Go ahead. You want? You want no. Go ahead. You you jumped on it. <laughs> I'm with the board of county commissioners. Close the public hearing and leave the record open for ten days. Is it necessary to open it for ten days? Legally, no. I mean, I can't imagine that. Well, I mean, what revise the motion? Can, can we go forth and and well, and, yes. and discharge eliminate? I, <laughs> I <laughs> just amend your motion. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no requirement that you hold it for 10 days. We typically do that, but in my experience with these types of proceedings related to the financial assurance plan, we've never had any public comments on this in the years past. So, if you wanted to move to approve it at this point, um, that would save us. A, a short visit in two weeks with you. Okay, thanks, Chris. I will amend my motion 
to move that the Board of County Commissioners approve as discussed. Well, I think we should we still close the public, the public hearing. Close the public hearing and, and then, then approve. approve. Second. Thank you. No okay. Apologize for your clunkiness on that. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Well, that was tough to get through. Don't take it personal. We didn't. Okay. Want to let's request <laughs> approval to update <clears throat> Carroll County Board of License Commissioners rules and regulations and approval for three pieces of legislation. Gentlemen. Good morning, Chairman Browning. Good morning, Commissioners, Ms. Ms. Wyndham and the Honorable Mr. Burke. Seriously? Wait, what? Did you, did you have to go there? <laughs> wait, wait, what? Did, did you really have to go there? Just two comments. <laughs> First of all, uh, happy birth, belated birthday, uh, Commissioner Wance. <clears throat> and Commissioner Rothstein, let it be known that that photo may say he's 5'8" when he is the drum major of the Westminster Band, he's a full six feet <laughs> because he has padding in his hat that makes him that tall. Uh, and now I understand why Commissioner Fraser is a excellent, well-known wrestling coach. He makes all the kids run all over South That's right. <laughs> East Carroll County. So, <laughs> and I'm amazed that with the photos that were here this morning that uh, we didn't have one of Commissioner Boucher's Halloween costumes, <laughs> which probably were rather risque, maybe, <laughs> knowing him. Yes. <laughs> Wait a second. You, you got to say something now about, you know, don't leave them out. Commissioner Weaver has oh, uh, been a longtime <laughs> personal friend, and uh, his son and I have been in uh, several joint ventures together so uh i have nothing but praise to say for that commissioner weaver thank you dave <laughs> give him the five bucks later <laughs> <laughs> he's buying you lunch <laughs> okay mr browning it's on you gentlemen thank you all very much for your support i have with me today our chief inspector uh, keith benfer on my left and another member of the board of license commissioners of carroll county mr george barnhart quick background laws change court cases change communities change <clears throat> so periodically the rules and regulations of the Board of License Commissioners for alcoholic beverages for Carroll County uh, need to be changed I think you all have been provided a copy of the changes yep. yes. 90% of the changes in our Carroll County regulations are basic uh, house cleaning changes uh, where the word pe pecuniary, pecuniary. pecuniary uh, is shown. We have changed that to financial. Uh, none of us, including George, George Harmoning, the other commissioner, uh, can pronounce it properly. So, uh, it's a good enough reason for me. Reason, good airily was the one. That was, that was the hard one. Uh, and our esteemed attorney, Mr. Dixon, uh, he kind of smiles when he does it too. So, anyway, about ninety percent of it. Otherwise, the main changes to our rules and regulations. And before I I go over them with you briefly, our procedure for this change was the commission had a meeting with interested parties attorneys uh, beverage holders license holders and so on and so forth and we came up with a general discussion of proposed changes with all of those in attendance and after that then we made the proposed changes before we had a public hearing our public hearing had as much opposition at that time as what you just witnessed with your previous yep. subject, okay? Rule 15 is adding a $50 a day penalty for renewal application taxes that are not paid on time. Background, we get people to come in on the last day to renew their license. If they're late, there's a $50 a day charge. They'll come in the last day and there may be a hold from the state for some unknown reason. 
and you all are more familiar with operating through the state than what I am. Uh, they can put papers underneath of a file and it could stay there forever when <laughs> there is really no need for that violation that the, the taxes have been paid or whatever the situation has occurred that has been satisfied. However, we are changing to a suspension hearing as the wording existing refers to a revocation hearing on renewal. We're changing that to suspension you may be aware that a revocation means that that licensee can never hold a license again or that establishment. Whereas a suspension is, we can have a hearing and take necessary action rather than revoking the license. I apologize, just to make sure we're all clear, page seven, rule 15, right. hotel, okay. Rule 20 is counting bar seats to a total amount of seats this is one of the things that we need state legislation for and I'll <clears throat> expand upon that later we're changing rule 24 to say that off-duty employees and patrons need to be out of the establishment at the closing time rule 28 is simply updating our music and noise rules to match whatever the county <coughs> rules are mm -hmm. rule 33 is making a new category for breweries as you probably know, breweries are pretty much uh, governed by state law. They have to have a county license, but uh, we can't supersede anything that the state says. Here again, it's under Rule 40, it also refers to the $50 a day penalty for renewal applicants of taxes that are not paid on time. <coughs> Rule 57, we're requiring restaurants and liquor stores to be open five days a week. Basically, they are the questions other than, I mentioned, housekeeping rules. There have been some court cases uh, that have been tried referring to residencies of a specific time, taxpayer, a resident, and property owner in the, the jurisdiction. That's all been struck down by court rulings, and that's all been removed from our regulations. Basically, there are the changes to Carroll County rules and regulations. The um, <coughs> town ordinance, the 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., that does not mean that they cannot have music. It just means that the music that they do have cannot disturb the community outside of that facility. I mean, right. yes, in sir. other words, the, it's kind of like the Good Neighbors Act, right. you know. Basically, okay. that's right. So, because... I don't want people to interpret this saying that music has to shut down at, you know, uh, um, 10 p.m. And that's not the case. That's not the case. We uh, turn the volume down a little bit, but our rules reflect whatever Carroll right. County's rule is yep. for right. noise. Yep. No, that makes that makes sense. And then the the 30 hours five days. Well, it was just 30 hours before, not saying five days. So now you're specifying that five days. They have to be five yes, days. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that class DB that breweries get that comes from the state, right? Right, right. That's that's why I mentioned that we're pretty much governed by state yeah. law. Okay, so they are pretty much. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> class D license is a class D license is is um, by population. So okay. every five thousand people in a district can have one class D license by us taking the brewers and making a separate license out of it it takes that away from the five from the other five thousand gotcha okay so now we could have three or four breweries in, in Westminster okay or we could have some places we could only have one and we had one and no one else could go in there now we're allowing <coughs> since they have a state license we allow breweries to go into a okay. different location makes sense because that's a that's big business right now yeah. so yeah yeah Okay. I mean, Frederick County is booming right yeah. now in Frederick City. Yeah, okay. Well, we probably have uh, two of the most outstanding outfits uh, in the state, in my opinion, which is 1623 Brewery in Eldersburg mm -hmm. and also uh, Mr. Stambaugh in Union Bridge with, That's right. with his uh, yeah. establishment up there. And there, there are others, too, that are 
are really good and and mm -hmm. you probably remember just recently i think in the paper the uh and so forth so there yeah. there are numerous ones and they keep yeah. sprouting up for homebrew and so on and so forth so yeah okay it's good for them it's good for the public and <clears throat> mr yeah, weaver will agree it's good for agriculture so oh yeah absolutely okay a lot of rye and corn goes into those products right. mm -hmm. and barley so. okay <coughs> with that i'd like to move the board of commissioners approve the changes to the rules and regulations of the board of licensed commissioners to approve the submission <coughs> of the three pieces of legislation to then be presented to the carroll county delegation i will second that i also want to state that i very much appreciate the reform initiative of the commissioners on this we took the time during our tenure to go through and look at a lot of our fees and services and updated them. And to see you all do the same thing is very admirable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all very much. We appreciate your support. I too want to thank and congratulate the veterans organization at Carroll County. We, as you begin your meetings, we have for a long standing time as the board of license commissioners honored them also with a moment yeah. of silence. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you all very much and have a nice day. Thanks, sir. You, too. you as well. I think I'll be seeing more okay. of this later. Public hearing yes, regarding a text amendment to the employment campus district to allow solar energy conversion facilities. Ms. Eisenberg. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I am going to be here for a while this yes. morning. I've got quite a few things on your agenda. Just relax. Settle down. <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. We'll see if we're fine after we get through all this. Okay. All right. Um, so we are here before you this morning for a public hearing for a zoning text amendment for the allowance of ground-mounted solar energy conversion facilities um, on employment campus zone land. Pub public hearing was published twice in the Carroll County Times on October 20th and October 27th um, for the public hearing this morning. Um, and the request of the text amendment is to allow for ground mounted solar energy conversion facilities within the employment campus district. I supplied a picture of what that looks like. I know there were some questions last time about what is ground mounted solar. Um, this was referred by this body on August 4th to the Planning Commission. Planning Commission discussed this at their August and September meetings and referred a favorable recommendation for adoption back to the Board of County Commissioners on September 20th. The recommended changes are for solar energy conversion facilities to have allow ground mounted, which is the yellow highlighted, solar energy conversion facilities may be approved as part of, and then the new language is or separate from the development plan pending conditional use approval. The ground mounted solar field may be no more than 25 acres in size and not to exceed 50% of the total gross acreage or whatever is lesser. I know there was some discussion about maybe the confusion with that, but this is how the um, notice was sent out prior, so that language did not change. So if that is a, a point of additional clarification, that can happen after the public hearing. Um, roof mounted solar energy facilities may be approved as part of the development plan subject to the requirements of 158.153 or mounted on a canopy in a parking area. That language was already there. That's not new language. That's part of the employment campus as it currently stands. So again, um, in the use table, this would go from a prohibited use in the employment campus to a conditional use approval. Um, again, then we had to also make amendments to 158.153 about solar energy generating systems. And the new language is employment campus districts is the addition uh, to um, that above paragraph. And then there shall be a size limit for systems in the employment campus district to be no more than that 25 acres or 50% of the gross site, whichever is lesser. And again, I know um, there was some discussion about that language, which we can amend, um, if so, after the public hearing when we come for discussion and decision. Um, so that's all I have to brief you on um, for what is being heard today. 
I have Scott Graff with um, the Bureau of Public Works with us. He and Jason Green brought um, the suggestion uh, to you all to make the decision to send it to Planning Commission. So if there's any other details you'd like to fill in, um, and Jason's here now. <laughs> Are there um, height restrictions on ground mounted? Um, we don't have height restrictions on them. I don't know what the industry standard is for height. We don't have height restrictions specifically for those. Okay, I'm, I'm just, yes ma'am? 10 feet. Yep. 15 feet. 15 feet? Okay. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> that was Jay Voigt, our zoning administrator. Our zoning administrator, Jay Voigt, said 15 feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you do this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, just with them being up to 15 feet, can um, things be stored underneath? the panels or would I'm that not be a not solar a, expert so I'd yeah. ask Jason and Scott if they could come up and talk Just about what how to their maximize solar background the property is. or Jay if Jay has any insight yeah, I, yeah, just uh, specifically with solar panels themselves, I mean, typically when they're in the ground mounted type, they're out in, in the middle of a field, so there's yeah. a maintenance requirement. There are certain clearances and stuff you need for the infrastructure underneath, such as the electricity and things like that. So, um, you know, you wouldn't want to store any obviously hazardous material underneath them and things like that. But these this type, unless it's a parking canopy, um, you know, there are opportunities for those on parking lots and things like that to use them to shield some of our, yeah. uh, some of those things, but that's not this application. I think okay. you could do, uh, like, I think we talked about this with the um, solar, the, what's this small community solar, mm -hmm. um, where you could have like grazing and things, right. some yeah. certain grazing yeah. animals Habitat and things, and stuff like that we talked but about. But not yeah. goats. Well, one second. Um, okay. I apologize, ma'am. You have a comment on this? Well, we're going well, to have, gonna have a public hearing. Okay. So this is a public yep. hearing. Okay. Just yeah. give us a second. So where, where else are you, Linda, with this? Time for that's public it. Comment. So it's time for so again we're we're having our public hearing now, right? Um, because this is um, a legislative, not a um, quasi judicial. Right. We can keep the record open for ten right. days, and it was right. a point of uh, discussion last time, um, and then we have discussion decision uh, scheduled for November seventeenth. Okay. So, any other questions directly to Linda? Okay. Now the public hearing. Are there public comments? So. Do you have comment cards? Well, so that's what I was going to ask. Um, if you wanted to commence a public hearing, ask anyone who wants to make oh, a okay. comment to fill out the card for this particular. Or does anyone have any public comment? Is there nobody here from the districts that are involved in this uh, text in? I'm not familiar with. Um, Hit, hit the microphone. This is being recorded, and so oh. if you wouldn't mind coming to the microphone there. And the, oh, okay. Yeah. If you um, can state your name for the record. Oh, my name is Annette Fleischel. I live on 1401 Fanny Dorsey Road in uh, Sykesville. And I know a little bit about the energy conservation and the energy generating systems because one has been proposed um, for across the street from where I live. So the, my wanting to make a mention about grazing underneath 15 foot, that's like highly unlikely. <laughs> um, I have I have goats in my barn. We have animals that cross the road, and it's very unlikely that they would be grazing underneath the underneath the solars because they would be afraid <laughs> of of the noise of what's happening. Um, I know that I have deer that come across by land, and they wouldn't even be able to go into the community because you have to have a fence around it. So there's a lot of questions about how you do grazing. Um, underneath these facilities. Now, my question um, that I had is I'm not familiar with what the term um, educational, does that mean that this is on campus educate or what's employment. It? Employment. Uh, employment? Employment. Employment. Okay, employment. Campus, they, mm -hmm. they call it a campus. Is it near schools? No, this is a zoning text amendment for properties that are zoned employment campus okay. in our code. So they, we have them spread mm -hmm. throughout the county. Okay, are these like light industry kind of things? There's a host of uses, can be light industry, can okay. have um, private educational facilities on them, can have certain <coughs> types of recreation, can even have a certain percentage of residential uses. Okay, I live um, near Cleese Mill, so I went down <laughs> Cleese Mill to try to see where 
the facility was going to be proposed for. And I didn't see any signs. Maybe I didn't go far enough down. But I noticed that there was light industry, you know, what I would call, you know, some development stuff. But ac directly across the street and sometimes adjacent to were residences were and land. And I saw part of the residential area that actually had uh, small crops growing on it, like there was a field with some, some corn growing and stuff. So my question was, what do you, how is this different, this text amendment different than the one that works with the agricultural zones? Now I have a copy of the text amendment and I've read it, and some of you, I've talked to you before about it, but, so that's my question, how is it different? Well, this is a public hearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so really what we're doing is we're taking information in at this time. Uh, okay. So it's not to have the dialogue back and forth, but to take oh. information and concerns. In. Now, and, and you're, okay. you, you're, you're doing well. You're, doing, you're, <laughs> you're, you're asking the right questions, and that, that's good to allow us to have further conversation with our staff, amongst ourselves. After public hearing, we keep it open to deliberate and then come back with our decisions okay. moving forward. Well, I guess my public comments would be something yeah. like, I wonder what the people who live uh, adjoining or adjacent to um, the, the solar energy systems that are gonna be put up. I know um, in our neighborhood that the, the neighborhood that's looking at one that is on agricultural zoned, and it, it was changed. The, the implementation for the solar passed this five member council back a year ago May in 21. Um, so I'm just wondering how those people would feel. I know our community is adamantly opposed, but it's an in it is not an industrial or, um, or employment. It is residences and it is farmland. Right. So maybe the nuance is different in terms of the public that's living next to the solar facility. 99.9% .9 of the 160 uh, names that I have on a position on a, on a petition against it are opposed to the solar facility so I'm speaking from the viewpoint of the residential mm -hmm. uh, areas and the people that go up and down the road there they are against it so I, I think you need to take some some comment and some some from the people that are going to be living next to it absolutely yeah. and I appreciate that I appreciate your comments <laughs> and um, what you've prepared and gathered uh, for information. Um, again, it allows us to understand the situation best, um, you know, because we want to serve the community best. And then what we'll end up having, just for you to understand, we'll close the public hearing, we'll have 10 days, and then we'll come back, right now scheduled for November 17th, to either further discuss and or make a decision. So, oh, okay. okay? I have one question. Is there an address at Clay's Mill that I could look at? I know there's an address um, on Stay. Route 140. It, I wondered not, if it was near the dump. So this is not about a specific area. Oh, okay. It's just this is actually area. about allowing solar in these type of zoned areas. So it really would be unfair to just say this one point. Now, understanding what address you're looking at, how that is specifically zoned, that's something that Ms. Eisenberg can help you with afterwards. Okay. Okay. All right. That'd be great. Thank okay. you so much. Yes, ma'am. Now, it just brings up a question on this, if I may. Uh, in employment campus, you wouldn't allow grazing under these, would you? Are there. I would not be. <laughs> there's any prohibition. I... <laughs> yes, you would, Commissioner. I, I don't know. You would? I don't know this is. Yes, agriculture is a, a use that's permitted in all zoning districts. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to do some grazing or have some sheep or cattle or something in these facilities, theoretically they could do that, yes. Okay, so I just want to capture, again, I apologize. Uh, try not to be so clunky in doing this, but uh, Mr. Voigt shared that grazing would be mm -hmm. allowed if um, there are obviously animals because agricultural animals can be on any of these premises, so zoned areas. And so. keep in mind, sheep are the primary. What we're primarily talking about, because uh, the others can destroy those areas. But, but again, that's not <clears throat> regarding this issue right yeah. now. So, just okay, and we'll capture, ma'am. We'll capture your public comments and whatever you want to provide, um, and then further discussion with Linda 
more than happy. Um, are there any other public comments in the room? I, I don't have any. I was, I, okay. I went, that's why I was hoping people would fill no. the cards out if they yeah. had a public comment to make. And for the other public here, and if you have a comment, please fill out the comment bar card and you can hand it to myself or Ms. Windham and we can um, call the names. Okay, so yeah, just get with her afterwards. And then Chris, is there anybody on the phone? I have no public commenters. However, if Linda could close the presentation when we're going through these public hearings so that we can show the timer for public comment. Thank you. Okay, all good. With that said, do I have a motion? I make the motion the Board of County Commissioners close the public hearing but keep the record open for a period of 10 days. Second. I got a motion. I have a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Linda, you now like to talk about the adoption of comprehensive rezoning, agricultural and conservation zoning districts, no. text amendments? No. no. We're in I-1 and Oh, I apologize. C3. Public hearing regarding a text amendment to I-1 C3 districts. Correct. Okay. Okay. So again, this is a public hearing. And so just clarification, so public hearing is a time for testimony from the public. So anyone that wishes to speak um, and give a comment, please fill out the comment card so we can have that information. Um, and we will set a three minute timer, not that, you know, if you wanna go over that as your decision, just so we can um, keep this in an orderly manner. And again, it's not a time for question and answer and discussion once the public hearing commences. It's just a time for testimony. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't our first time here with the Board of County Commissioners on this request. Um, again, as with the last public hearing, notice was given um, in the Carroll County Times, as we're required to do, on October, October 20th and October 27th. This is for a text amendment request for the Industrial 1, or Industrial Light District, and the Commercial High, or C3 District. Um, there are multiple requests, which I will go over in my presentation. This information has been posted on our website and available for public distribution and public viewing um, for several months now. As you recall, we came before you on August 4th having a discussion about this very lengthy text amendment proposal. Um, and you referred it to the Planning and Zoning Commission with very specific instructions to them. This was discussed at the Planning Commission meetings in August and September and they referred back to you with a favorable recommendation on September 20th. And I'll go over those recommendations. So there is a lot that was requested in this particular um, text amendment. Specifically, the first portion is pertaining to the business industrial park in the I-1 district. Because of how we revised the industrial restricted and industrial general districts with the comprehensive code revisions we created a new i1 district and a new i2 in the new i1 district there was the elimination of the business slash industrial park and those became now referred to as industrial parks however we already had one business slash industrial park operating in the county and the decision was made with that code amendment to grandfather in that particular use on that particular property because they were the only one like it. So because of that, when we did the comprehensive um, zoning text amendment for those districts originally, because there was only one, no definition was included. So the proposal is to include now a specific definition just for posterity's sake to put in the business industrial park um, defined as a project development approved under the business park provisions in effect prior to April 1st, 2019. The next um, recommended change is for self-storage facilities that they would not be part of the commercial use calculation in those districts. Currently, there's a balance between industrial uses and commercial uses in those districts that have a calculation ratio, um, but certain uses within that are not part of that ratio and the request is to have self-storage facilities not part of that calculation ratio currently medical and dental centers are exempt um, but now the request is for the inclusion of self-storage facilities as you can see in the yellow highlight that's underlined while not otherwise permitted in the i1 district shall be committed in a business and 
industrial park and shall not be included in the calculation. That's supposed to be like a number two. And um, not included in the calculation of commercial uses, which are otherwise not permitted in the I-1 district. So again, they would be without limitation. Secondly, um, self-storage facilities shall be regulated by the requirements of Section 158.079, which shall prevail over any conflict or inconsistency with any other provisions required pursuant to the chapter. The requirement of Section 158.158 shall not apply to self-storage facilities developed with any business industrial park. Next is to create parking requirements for self-storage in the park. Currently, it's a formula of the various types of uses within those parks. So to be um, more specific for the self-storage is to have an average of 3.5 parking spaces per, uh, per 1,000 square feet of the building. Area shall be provided for lots within the business park with the exception of self-storage facilities, which shall require two parking spaces for employees and the greater of one parking space for each 20,000 square feet of building area or five spaces. The minimum number of spaces as required herein and any modifications to parking space design standards as previously approved, approved by the Planning Commission during the site development plan approval of the business industrial park shall supersede mm. any parking requirements and design standards of this chapter, of chapter 155. So again, um, creating these standards. Um, next, the request for this district was to modify sign requirements um, to have, in addition to the signage allowed by Section 158, each building lot or lots within the business park may have uh, signs in accordance with 158.114. So now um, the final with the business industrial park um, is allow yards on both sides of the interior lot line may be zero and Planning Commission may reduce other yard requirements adding new language that where the zero yard is proposed, setbacks, buffers, and or landscape screaming requirements shall not be applicable. So meaning not for external boundaries mm -hmm. to a particular um, property, but the internal lot lines for these types of parks mm -hmm. are not subject to those landscaping requirements. So be more explicit about that is the request. Okay, now moving from the industrial business park, which is, again, that one particular property, that one particular use. Um, in the current uh, I-1 zone, we have what's called an industrial park. And um, the suggested recommended changes, currently um, we allow 10,000 square foot of retail space to increase the size allowance from 10,000 to 25,000 square feet allow medical and dental without limitations, <clears throat> allow parks to be subdivided. Um, in our current code, we do not allow subdivision of parks. So the language would be, an industrial park shall be permitted to subdivide at the option of the developer and subject to all applicable requirements in chapter 155 related to subdivision. And again, as we said, with the self-storage and the parking standards in the business industrial park, Again, the creation of parking standards for the industrial park. So that way there's not this crazy calculation of looking what the different types of uses are and figuring it out based on that, making it a comprehensive parking requirement. Um, and then finally, this is for the flip side. So industrial zones, we have industrial parks. In the C3 district, we have a business park. So again, this is um, business park shall be permitted to subdivide at the option of the developer and shall be subject to all requirements in chapter 155 related to subdivision. So again, keeping this similar to the industrial park allowance, allowing that same thing within the business park. Um, and again, creating parking requirements for the business park um, and allowing that at that 3.5 as opposed to the 2.3 given that this is more of a commercial type district, so more parking may be required um, because of the service and commercial nature of the business park. Um, and then just quick tables comparing um, the three different types. So we have the business industrial park, no longer, the business park moving forward, and the industrial park moving forward. Um, these are what's currently allowed in each and the use is permitted. The red is the new use or change to the district. So for here, as you can see in the table, that's at 25,000 square feet uh, increase. 
um, the restrictions lifted for as part of the percentage calculation for the self-storage facilities um, in the business slash industrial park and the medical and dental facilities in the industrial park. Um, the creation of parking requirements in each of the types of parks. Um, in the business industrial park, uh, clarification regarding the additional signs for each use. Um, allowing subdivision of the commercial, I mean, of the industrial park and the business park. Um, and then uh, for just miscellaneous uh, self storage facilities in the park should not be regulated by the section of the requirements um, in 158, 158. And then the other two requirements, which would be um, the exact same for both the business park and the industrial park for um, where a zero yard is proposed um, at an interior lot line, setback, buffers, and landscaping screening requirement shall not be applicable. So that is all the changes that are being proposed. <coughs> Again, as with the last public hearing, this is our um, public hearing and time to take public comment. Um, because it's legislative again, we would keep the record open for 10 days and we'll be back before you on November 17th for discussion and decision. Okay, thanks for the uh, presentation. Do we have any public comments on the phone, Chris? Yes, sir. Okay, do we have any public comments in the room? Okay, let's limit this to two minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> good, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, this is, this sounds complicated. Well, then we know who you are. Would you mind? Uh, Clark Schaefer. Uh, sorry. Um, this sounds complicated, but it, it really isn't that complicated. Uh, what this is, is it's an adjustment to Carroll County's carve outs for these kind of parks. And I, I'm familiar with the history of this. What happened is there was industrial zones I and I, I1 and I2, and they had a bunch of lists in them. They were primarily manufacturing, and then I2 got heavy industrial. And then the county figured out many, many years ago that they needed to carve out these park-like provisions for, from these industrial districts. And it's been very successful. Liberty Exchange would not be there if there wasn't this carve-out. Now, the carve-out the county chose was to, was to say, if you do one of these parks, which requires a huge capital investment, long-range planning and a coordinated development we will loosen up our industrial our tight industrial zone and allow some some commercial service uses in there and as I say it's been very successful the uses are compatible the marketing has been people have invested people have spent money people have created jobs people have paid taxes and so what this is is St. John who I represent um, they have a lot of experience uh, here and in other areas, and they are asking for a couple tweaks. Now, a lot of these are housekeeping, and Linda dutifully and properly went over every detail. But really, what we're talking about here are we're looking to add medical dental centers, or not add, but allow medical dental centers without counting against the sort of the ratio. Now, what's the rationale for that? Well, the rationale is this. They are compatible uses, they are needed services, and they provide good jobs. Why not encourage them? Why not allow them? And they fit. Um, with regard to the, uh, the self-storage, which I know I think there's been a, a lot of misunderstanding, was this is not a text amendment that allows self-storage where it's not already allowed. It's already allowed, okay? What this does is, is uh, adjust the parking regs for it and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute but what it does is says it if you do self storage it doesn't count against your ratio of retail service stuff and the rationale for that is they these uses which in, in what we contemplate are the office building climate controlled type thing these uses are more like warehouses than they are like convenience stores they use very few services and they pay commercial industrial tax rates uh, a home run in a lot of respects. So why not uh, encourage them? They already are allowed. Um, the 10,000 to 25,000 foot square footage, that uh, allows a specialty grocery store uh, to perhaps, uh, whereas at 10,000, you're not gonna get anything like that. So, and they're compatible. 
The parking, I think, and everybody agrees. I think I haven't heard negative comments from staff or anybody else. It works, and right now there are no. Well, right now the parking regs for self storage, or, or for these these parks, is you look at each use, you look at the chart. And then you go, well, that use has X spaces. This use has, doesn't work for a park, okay? You need a two point, you know, you need a uniform standard for a park because all those uses are in one area. You, and, and it's practically impossible because when you get your parking, when you get your site plan approved, you don't know what your uses are gonna be. You don't know if you're gonna have a medical dental or a, a Rite Aid or a, a, an electrical uh, a contractor. So you need this 2.5 per that we and and by the way one of the self protective uh, sort of elements to this thing is I don't think St John or any any developer that does these would be proposing uh, uh, a standard that would have a sub that cr would create a substandard park they've got a lease finish your thoughts they've got to go uh, this comes to you with a unanimous recommendation from the Planning Commission. And I do not, and I also submit to you that if your economic development director thought that this was going to be bad for the industrial park business in, or business park business in Carroll County, he would have said so. And he, 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 he hasn't said so. In fact, we've met with him. He's supportive of it. So we would appreciate your support. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, comments? Okay. I'll make the motion we close the public hearing and keep the record open for 10 days. Second. Okay. Again, is there a reason to keep it open? Yes. 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 Legally, yes. you have to. Legally, for this, okay. you have to. It's legislative. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Linda, you're two for two. Adoption, comprehensive rezoning, agricultural conservation zoning districts, text amendments. Okay. We talked about this before. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's all new. Um, no, so uh, we had a really wonderful uh, work session with. Uh, you all on Tuesday. Um, we really appreciate all the comments and insight. We pre prepared legislation for your final review, and we're here for your discussion and decision, hopefully, on the recommended changes to the Agricultural Zoning District, as well as the Conservation Zoning District. As you know, this has been years and years and years in the making for the entire co uh, comprehensive code revisions and we've been working non-stop for the last 12 to 13 months with the agri -conser agricultural conservation work group our yeah, internal concept team planning commission and various works many many work sessions with you so with that i'm going to turn it over to mary um, to if there's any other additional questions that you need to have discussed yeah go ahead mary no. I'm really just here to answer questions. We made the changes, the specific change to ag remaining portions that was discussed on Tuesday. You should have that in front of you. Um, no, we don't. We, we don't. County don't. Attorney's Office. Could, I, could we see that language, please? And also, the decisions that we made on Tuesday during the work session, are they bonding, binding or can they be modified? They could be modified. This is this is your opportunity. This yes. is our chance to do that. Okay. Um, I think anyone would, but <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> you know me by now. Come on, man. It's close. Show the only change. <laughs> I need Commissioner Wes to. How long have you worked with me now? I need, I need Commissioner Wes long. to convince me. You want to go down to the. Just go to that specific, yeah, go to just, yeah. just go to the end where we we had the tiered concept approach that we discussed for a, a lengthy yeah. period of time. Right there. And, yeah. yeah. And I, I will share before yeah, you're going to convince me is I really <laughs> appreciate the conversation Tuesday. That, that was probably one of the best collegial discussions that we had back and forth. Um, you know, that means a lot 
in our community and uh i really respected it a whole lot i walked out of there although maybe not agreeing with everything but really believed that was very well done so but now convince me well now i <laughs> i don't you know i don't know if it's up to me to convince you but yeah. Uh, you know, again, I, I will, I will uh, echo your your thoughts on that. We had some really good discussions, and I will also echo the fact that there were some great discussions at the Planning and Zoning Commission as well. Uh, I can't keep, I don't want to keep beating that message, but yeah. man, it's 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 really good to have somebody you know from this group sitting there uh, to to be able to hear what those discussions are. We hear what they say. But yet, it's understood more when someone can say, yeah, but what they really meant to say was. So it just, I think that's a, a great way to do it. Uh, you all heard what I had to say uh, at the work session. Uh, I'm still challenged by the fact that um, a lot of our agricultural community folks uh, were in favor of, of the one and done method, if you will, uh, because a lot of our agricultural land is 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 not being used for the intent that it was designed or the intent as to why it was there in the first place uh and that's why uh i had for those that didn't watch the the um the work session uh, that's why i do agree with the tiered approach i do i think that's a good way in which to reach that happy medium if you will and allow for those that that do want to do us something additional but yet respect uh what our heritage or, or whatever is when it comes to our ag land so i had made uh the recommendation that yes the tiered approach is good uh, but i didn't like the zero to 20 acres uh, i wanted to do zero to 40 is that what i said for one and then over 42 uh and i thought that gave that kind of um, balance the, the balance if you will between our ag community and those that feel so strongly about it and the ability for folks that want to do something with their ag land if they're if they so desire to do to do that uh, the ability to do something with it and not uh, while still respecting property rights because from the first day I sat here I made mention about property rights, which are very important to me. So I think that would have reached a happy medium. I, I think this is a little high, uh, and I don't like um, th that additional usage. So yeah. Dick, you and I uh, kind of agreed at the work session on that. Uh, well, I, I'm respectful of our ag community because I've probably the got the biggest ag district in the county. So I uh, uh, liked so your stop. idea. Of uh, coming up on this because what we don't want is to have um, uh, well, basically a commercial zone in those ag remainders but this does give us a little uh, you're, you had a good compromise I'll, I'll give you that and I want to go back to your workshops when you started this and uh, Price I think you were probably ahead on all that you did a great job mm -hmm. through the workshops getting this to this point and I'm in favor of everything except for this one little glitch. I would like to see change to Commissioner Wance's thought on it, and this could go through very easily. I think so. The um, and I appreciate the concern I have. You know that I well, what I'm thinking through is one is absolutely property owner <coughs> rights. I, I want to keep them, and if they have the ability, you know to do what's what they want to do on their property that that's first and foremost in my mind but i'm also thinking and balancing it with the economics in the county it gives another opportunity to grow the county without overgrowing the county um and that's why i was thinking about these numbers was one additional would be an additional economic you know uh opportunity um I don't I don't thinking through that I'm I'm having tough time chewing on that you know to be honest uh, you know it's uh, we, we have designated growth areas for a reason um, we have growth happening the impact that this would have on revenue coming into the county 
uh, would probably be minimal if we went up to three and uh, as opposed to keeping it at two. Um, so I'm kind of having that, you know, over the last few days thinking through this. So, okay. Well, with that, go ahead, Don. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I Sorry. knew this. I got to get this debate in here. This is good. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go, go. <laughs> First, these are ag remainders. No one is, is forced to do anything additionally on those ag remainders. People own them if they want to farm and so forth. Right. They're welcome to do that. No one's going to stop them from doing that. Secondly, even with the tiered approach that's up there on the screen right now, we've already restricted what can be done on the ag remainders if we make this change that, that's up there right now. I am not in favor of restricting it any more than that. I, I think th this is a good, good compromise. I, I, Eighty some percent will be in the one or two additional uses. I can't remember exact number I have in front of, but eighty some percent will be in those one or two yep. uses. That's it. And I'm not. And why I, I am looking at the county, I think it's it would help the county. But that's not the main reason I like this better is because the people that have owned these properties, and I believe this went into effect in the 70s or something of that effect, that where they had more rights for their own property. That's why I think this is restricting somewhat, and it is, but it still gives them some use of that property if they want to take this particular use. Well, we still have but two it, does, or three. it does step it back. Say it again. We still have two or three additional rights on this. If you count the original, on. yeah, count the original, it would be three under what I'm proposing, right? It would be but the original is the residential lot, right? So right. This residential is just plus two that's others. one, so that's plus one. two others, plus two plus others, two and then this way up to 42, over 43. So you've still, you would still have gotten three shots at the apple, if you will. Wow, uh, correct. And keep right, in mind, this is not one commercial ground, this non. is agriculture. Yeah, one residential, two non. Yeah. And I think two <laughs> non is enough. I would say to, to Commissioner Weaver's remark, this is not commercial, this is agricultural. It is. No one's forcing them to do anything on this land. But they can, if they want to, keep it agriculture. That's that's the, one of the things I keep going back to. No one said, okay, you have to develop this. You have to put three uses on this. because you, No, you don't have to do that. If you want to keep farming, then farm it. They There's can. nothing wrong with that, or, or lease it out, or however you want to do it. But this gives them an opportunity to use that land for other ways. And they've had that right since the 70s. I don't think we should take more of that away than we are in this table right here. If That's they just want to develop, then they can request a zoning change and go to commercial or whatever. That's still an option. I mean, it is and it's not because, again, you know, as we know, we've seen two rezoning requests come through. The bar is high for just a request. We don't request mm -hmm. in grant zonings. I, right. I mean, that's just, right. but comprehensively, yes, and could master plans change and mm -hmm. change the nature of the ag zone? That could happen for some particular parcels in the future. I, I don't know. It depends on what a new plan would say. My point is, just to say, I want to rezone to commercial, that's not how the system right. works. Right. So that, that likelihood would be small. Right. Yeah. I'd like to move that we uh, follow uh, Commissioner Wance's recommendation on the tiers. Which is one, one, in one 40, up to 40 one, acres? Uh, Go ahead. I'm up sorry. to 41 and over 42 uses. Up to 40 acres, you'd get one additional. One additional. Uh, more than 40 acres. More than 40, you'd get two. <coughs> Which is a lot. No pun intended. Okay, so I have. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. So I have a motion on the floor that's modifying this one, two, and three to one and two. Well, obviously, I'm going to second it. Okay, so now I have a motion. I have a second. <laughs> so, uh, any further discussion on this? No, other than the fact to say, look, I. I'm not going to lose any sleep over this. I'm not, uh, but I'm very respectful of, of what you're saying, and I do appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, they this gives them additional. But I think it also makes a bold statement on how much we 
respect our, our heritage when it comes to ag remainders or whatever I mean it's I, I just think it just it goes to that and I truly believe that there's not going to be a lot of this anyway yeah I and just don't think that there's going to be uh, so to your argument about the economics part right, of it right. I, I, if what it's going to be a yeah, it pennies on the dollar, if you will. You're not you go gonna back see to a, the original intent. Yeah, you're not. You're not going to see a, a broad. Uh, oh, rush in now. But it goes back to the intent of what this was made for when we started this whole adventure in in this county. And um, you know the horror stories that we hear about other counties where they're. I mean, one of the counties you brought up. Five. They can do five things, or what? That's just total. But that's total, right? And, right. And that's different. This is complete. This, this is, is complete. Only on I know. Romania. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get lost in the numbers. Don't bring that I up. got C's in math, <laughs> and you taught it, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I just think it. For me, I'm going to stop debating. But I just second it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I just, <laughs> and I want to say this. I believe, Linda, you. This was, you pulled this out. Uh, this tiered concept if you will and i think it's great and i i, I want i thank you for it i think it just went a bit too far in my opinion but again i'm not going to lose sleep over it so i will Dick, well I, pro <laughs> I might but uh, anyway. okay we have a motion and a second for this to be amended again from one two and three to one and two as we've been discussing all in favor of the motion Aye. Aye. Against? Opposed? No. Okay. Three, two. I may lose sleep over this. Okay. What else we want to talk about on this? Um, so now we need to um, adopt now the changes to 158 um and then 155 with this amendment and then the uh adoption resolution so we need motions for you need three different motions correct so i'll move that we adopt the revisions to 155. second as amended as amended, as amended. Yeah. As amended. second any discussion on that all in favor aye aye aye, aye. 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 okay let me keep going. Yeah. Sure. You're on a roll. <laughs> uh, I make the motion. The motion. I make the motion that uh, we adopt the code revisions to Chapter 158 as presented with the modification. No, no. No, that was in 155. That was, was one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I'll just stop at with as the modifications presented. as presented. Promise. Yeah. Second. Okay. I got a motion. I got a second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I don't have anything. We sent it to him. I apologize, Dennis. You're good, right? What's the thing? I said I. Okay. We'll, we'll get okay. it. Okay. And then. Okay. Is there anything else on this? Um, yes, and the implementation resolution needs to be adopted as well, um, and that's simply stating that this will take effect on December first, and anybody in the development, any property in the that's development right. review process. Is under the old provisions. We talked about it at the work session. Correct, it's the right. same resolution so, we used for commercial, industrial, and residential. Right. So if you're in the queue, you're in the queue. If you're anywhere Correct. in the queue at all, right. as of December 1st. As of Decem December 1st. Before December 1st, mm -hmm. you're. Yep. But after December the 1st. You're under the new code. Uh, I move that we go under the new code. Adopt the Adopt. implementation resolution as of December 1st. I'll make that motion as stated. I'll second, second that. <laughs> okay, we got a couple seconds. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Just aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. A lot um, of very good discussion. I'll, I'll share in a couple of, uh, you know, um, whatever we call them, topics, agenda items. This is going to play. I'll tell you that right now. Um, so, yeah, and we'll get to that. Okay, this one should be relatively easy. Let's go with the rezoning case 227 MJY Investments LLC. <clears throat> um, and this is just for your discussion and decision for this rezoning case. 
Um, with me is Hannah Weber for any additional questions. Um, the public hearing closed um, two weeks ago, and um, you did receive some additional comments, but the record was closed. Um, so now is the time to make a decision to rezone the property from agriculture, as it's currently zoned, to commercial three. Medium. Medium. I'm sorry, C2. Medium. And commercial medium. Were there any comments that were made additional or no? There was no, no other. Yeah, there was one, wasn't there? Yes, but the record, or two, but the record had closed the yeah. day I of understand. the okay. hearing. So. Um, was there any additional conversation about this? I mean. Mm -mm. I hadn't heard any and <clears throat> you know even though when things close we still get phone calls and emails and yeah. texts and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> that you know are relevant um, so I'm not sure why we would not move forward with this <clears throat> um, so I'll move the Board of County Commissioners approve the rezoning of rezoning or the rezoning Case number. Case number 227 <laughs> MJY Investments LLC from Agriculture C2 based on the mistake argument presented. <clears throat> Sir. Okay. I got a motion. I got a second. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 I know we should have done it 10 days ago. I know. No, no I, I'm. I'm <clears throat> fine with it and I want to you know I appreciate the the, the uh, comments and all that we have but this this one I believe is 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 a common sense uh, decision uh, because of where it lies and that, yeah. you know, so <clears throat> now the next one the text amendment referral to the planning commercial centers section 155.094 <clears throat> as I mentioned I believe this is relevant to what we discussed two agenda items or agenda item before um, dealing with concerns of overgrowth dealing with property owners rights dealing with what makes the most common sense to keep Carroll County the way we want Carroll County and I appreciate uh, you know us bringing this forward as we said we were going to with Mr. Mc, uh, Cormack uh, you know attention to this um, and now whether we want to bring this back to the planning and zoning because that's what this is about it's referring to them referring back to them um, just referring to them not that um, I just want to be clear that, 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 that this is this proposal is not in their purview right now right so right now um, this would be something for you to refer to them yeah to, to, to review and, and, and right. make any recommended changes right yeah. right okay I just I want to think yeah. it was in no, no. process when we said refer nope. back. Okay, yeah. Refer and say back. Refer to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> before we start on this, Chris, are there any comments or anybody on the phone? I've got no one on the line. Okay. Is there anyone here that wants to comment on this? Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Bill McCormick. And I live in Eldersburg. Um, so when you guys uh, approved the current code for planned commercial centers, you guys used language that would allow discretion to be used when these types of projects were submitted to the county. And I believe that you were deliberate and specific when you used that language to allow for discretion. Uh, the discretion does no good if there are five unelected people, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals, who do not accurately represent the entirety of the community that can overrule the commissioners, the PZC, and the citizens of Carroll County. So all I'm asking you to is approve this referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I'm looking for something that's more appealing to my surroundings. I'm not against growth, Commissioner. Um, I'm, I actually don't mind mixed use either. I, I think uh, the issue is with the overcrowding and the kind of piling on of a lot of new developments. And I, I just don't believe these planned commercial centers fit with the surrounding areas. 
Uh, some of you have said recently that the code should continue to be reviewed for improvements. Um, that statement was made during a proposed change from a developer. Actually, I think you guys just reviewed that today. Um, I can only hope you feel the same about changes proposed by citizens. Uh, the fact that my petition has made it this far uh, kind of makes me believe that you, you do feel the same way, and I really do appreciate you bringing this to, um, to the point that it's at now. There is a clear consensus of the citizens that do not believe planned commercial centers fit with the surrounding communities as written in the code. This has been demonstrated by letters to you all and petitions with hundreds of names on them that were completely ignored by the Board of Zoning Appeals. The first planned commercial center was a mistake and they're in the process of making another bigger, just as unsightly mistake. Please do not allow a third. Let the Planning and Zoning Commission review this section of the code to ensure it is in line with the county's master plan of smart measured growth. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thank you. and. Uh, not to unpack any of that comments because that would be unfair, except to say um, that we do listen to the community or we do as best I can only speak for my colleagues and I um, in moving forward and that's where we've gotten to. Uh, whether we agree or not, um, but it's very important that we have the ability to listen to the community and act on uh, the best interests of our community. So, uh, do we have any other public comments? Yes, Ms. Kelly Schaefer Miller. Yeah, so just thank you, Mr. McCormick. Yes. Good morning, Commissioners. You could uh, take three and a half minutes since your dad only took I two and a half. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Kelly Schaefer Miller here today um, on behalf of Stavlas Properties. <laughs> I appreciate Mr. McCormick's ability uh, to request this type of amendment to the code. Mr. McCormick has been a vocal opponent in the Stavlas uh, approved site plan, which is currently uh, in the midst of a circuit court appeal. I, my brief comment here is that, as you are all well aware, because you were all very involved in the review of the comprehensive text amendment, the planned commercial centers were carried over from the old code into that comprehensive text amendment and were carefully reviewed by this, uh, this board of commissioners and planning commission during that process. They are restricted to commercially zoned properties and they have an allowance for residential uses only on a second story. So there are very limited instances, and I think that was probably done at the intent of this commission, uh, where any <coughs> residential component would be involved in these planned commercial centers. There's no exemption for planned commercial centers to get out of other site plan requirements. So school adequacy, uh, all other adequate public facilities have to be approved as part of that process as well. I, I think that this is, uh, at a county-wide level, this is an inappropriate request of a text amendment. This would not just impact one property, this would impact any commercial property in the county, and so I do not believe that this is an appropriate request at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other public comments? Okay. Ms. Eisenberg, Ms. Lane, the floor is yours. Um, that's do you have all any have comments on this? Okay. So again, I mean, uh, I'll, I, let me just go over briefly though for the viewing audience. So on October 6th, a concerned citizen from the Freedom Mary did come before the commissioners during their public comment period requesting that this particular section, which is 155094, referred to as planned commercial centers, this is not in the zoning code but in the subdivision portion, um, be forwarded to the Planning Commission for their review. Specifically, a letter was sent by Bill McCormick requesting the commission review the allowance of the second story residences and their associated densities. So specifically, if you were to refer this to the Planning Commission, our request would be that you limit it to what the specific concern concern is with the planned commercial center provision. Say that again, please. Yeah, that last um, our, our request would be that you would limit, instead of opening up to the entirety of the, the C1, C2, and C3 districts, which we've already completed, and the entirety of planned commercial centers, because if we open up to planned commercial centers, that is the commercial districts are the only place we have planned commercial centers. <coughs> planned commercial centers serve a purpose of having, I guess, strip malls or services within our commercial districts. This would be the only district to have them. A planned commercial center simply means you can have multiple uses 
on a particular commercial site. The portion, I believe, and from my discussion with Mr. McCormick, that his concern was the residential second story component specifically, not with planned commercial centers in general. If we eliminate planned commercial centers in general, you would be eliminating completely the use of having um, you know, a, a multi-use commercial center s similar to what's here at the corner mm -hmm. of 140 and Center Street. You would not be allowed to have those. So, so go ahead. I so you're so so you're suggesting if we do refer this refer this that only the that part of the correct he's not not the whole thing and not the whole really? I'm sorry if I may um, and that's similar to these text amendments that for which you had public hearings earlier today on the I one and and C three mm -hmm. yes. um, when when <clears throat> it was presented um, at that time when those requests were made. The board specifically referred just the topics that were being requested. So the planning commission, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. narrowly narrowed their focus on just those requests. So how do these requests fit in, uh, you know, to the overall, uh, and what impact would they and have? So rather than opening the entire I one. So you don't want to open up the aperture on right. the specific text amendment. You want it to be focused on the request this portion of, but it's, but it's really only one portion of the planning commercial centers correct it's not planning commercial centers correct it's the accessory use because that's it's what the, okay so it's the Thank accessory use that, that yeah okay yes so since this is hmm. since this particular case is in circuit court now this would do nothing for anything that's in motion or would do nothing to affect whatever that decision were correct yeah. This is only prospective future stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 struggling with this anyway because I've seen the amount of work that has been going, that has been done, and you know, where where, I'm not sure where this stops. While I appreciate the citizens coming out and and you know, bringing uh, these these types of challenges, uh, you know, we could do this with almost every part of the code, if someone so desires to do that and um, I mean I'm, I'm I'm again I'm struggling with this because I've seen the amount of work that planning and everyone else our department our staff the Planning Commission has done up to this point now we're going now 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 we're we're gonna go back and say well now wait a minute but, and again I'm no disrespect to anyone that wants to reach out uh, I get that I've done a lot of that over the last eight years to revisit, but this is pretty complex when you do w this. Was this, this discussed in the original proposal that went for planning and zoning? So this has been on the books for I yeah. guess, 30 or 40 years. Um, I think right. The, right, um, right. And then it was utilized um, with the <clears throat> Princess Shopping Center right. uh, near the 20, 2632 mm -hmm. corridor. Um, and this is only the second time that this particular right. provision has been used. Right. And so we did discuss it as part of the revisions to C1, C2, and C3, and the decision was made by this body to continue with the current provisions as they stand right. with those. So, And it's just a development yeah. option. It's not a zoning decision. It's just a development option. The, the um, couple things. One, like I said, two agenda items when we started talking about the um, how we're dealing with agricultural remainders. We are looking at the community. I'm doing what's right for Carroll County, and it's a community issue. I feel like this is a community issue. Um, you know, it definitely, with the one planned commercial center being on 2632 down in Eldersburg, uh, this being a second potential um, site. I mean, there's only so many places that these things are going to go. The community has reached out. And, you know, um, you're, you're right, it can continue on. People can question everything, but it's not just one individual. Uh, and I'd rather get it right. I mean, it may take a step back, um, but I'd rather take that step back, bring it to the Planning and Zoning Commission, let them work through it, have the work sessions, have these discussions to get it right. Um, and I refer right back to to so you're saying it's wrong. I'm saying that 
there's potential for it to be wrong. Yeah. This is we just went over this. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you're saying you've heard from other people? Absolutely. Okay. The, yeah, no, no, I apologize. No, I didn't mean to be a, um, no, ab absolutely. Oh my gosh. This, the uh, um, storage facility down 26 um, and Prothrow Road are like the three topics that I'm hearing on the table probably. But this has been a very um, uh, important item on 26. It's right across the street, Liberty Exchange. There's a lot of growth happening. Um, and a lot of the community is saying, let's fill what's already there, then continue to build out 26. Um, because but this is about the specific use of residential. This doesn't have anything yes. to do with. No, that's right. Right. Which is where I'm struggling <clears throat> with it. I mean, isn't it? it it's amending. I remember the planning. The center. I remember planning commission talking about this, about how that's sort of the sort of what's happening now. Right? And that don't don't you guys remember that? I'm I'm sorry. This this what? I mean they were talking about these particular places and how, you know, the rep or whatever it is. Right. The residents over top is, is the sort of the yeah. Is sort of the 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 norm, if you will. And I'm not I mean, I don't I think the point was we have to allow for some type of multifamily somewhere and this was an opportunity to right. allow um, multifamily housing which right. is necessary um, to have affordable housing in Carroll County for our citizens yeah. that need that type of housing stock. That's and what we have it was. Very Thank limited you. Limited opportunity for that, and this was just one more avenue since we don't have a lot of avenues to do that for such. Right. This is and very. It doesn't even be affordable housing. It's just it would it'll be whatever the market yeah, approves. Yeah, exactly. But right. That's where it, it was the market. Right. Okay. Thank you. This you is a, a lot better. Very night. popular concept in many <laughs> other counties. Correct. Yes. Yes, a lot of yeah. jurisdictions do yeah. use Howard this model. And yeah, and I. Yeah, it is, and uh, again, keeping the. Again, the the culture of Carroll County. That's what we did, two, activities ago. Um, I think we should take a step back and allow the Planning and Zoning Commission to review uh, this option. And if changes need to be made, they make them and recommend them back to us. And remember, on the other side of that coin is they could very well get to the point where they say, no, we're good with it. That's correct. Absolutely. And let it go. I mean, this isn't the, <clears throat> this isn't the magic, oh, it's getting changed now. No. Cause and, and that's I remember right. those conversations that's now right. that you've refreshed my memory. And they were good conversations on, on ability to, to live somewhere affordably right. and not in the $750,000 home on five acres. So my problem with this, Planning Zoning just went over this. We just went over this. And we're going to do it again? I understand this is brought before us. We've looked at this. Of course, we're going to make a decision right now whether we're going to move forward. But this wasn't like it was done 10 years ago. This was done very recently <coughs> by both Planning Zoning and us. And we... Uh, we came. We settled where we settled. And you want to make a motion for the, it? the community's influence. Uh, I think is very impactful, and I want to respect it. Um, I'll move the board of county commissioners forward the proposed zoning text amendment to the planning and zoning commission for their review and recommendation. I'm going to second that because we have to get this right. Exactly. So you but think then, we got it wrong? But you I, think I mean, we got it wrong. That's right. No, nobody says it's wrong, but we so had all these. Counting. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, but we had all these discussions. We talked about this when we were went over this. We, we I, just I did this. We, have we a, just a motion and second. Now it's open for discussion. Sorry. But okay. Thank you. Um, okay. No, no, and, key, and that's fine. I just, um, you know, when we did the Beatty property, we took a lot of steps back because we had to get it right, and we took. I mean, it was very significant on the planning and zoning committee. I mean, many, many steps. Dan Huff, you know, was up there with me and he's like, we gotta slow this down and get it right and make, get the right mixture. And, you know, that's what this is. Um, and there's enough dialogue that's been it, happening that I wanna do what's best for our community. It ain't about constituents, it's about the community and okay. it's about the neighborhood, I, and yeah. let's get it right. And and you're right. They may come back and say, no, we got it right. Enough of this. Um, and that's yeah. their responsibility as well. 
uh, from Planning and Zoning Commission. Yeah, I'm going to approach this from a personal standpoint. Want to vote for this because I'm going to vote for it because uh, I do think we need to hear from the public. But from you know, from a, a governmental standpoint, um, I just think this is this is wrong to go back and I, I hate I I I. I very much dislike the phrase, we have to get this right, because you automatically assume that it's wrong. And I dislike that phrase. I always have, because I, I sit down there, and I, I have see we all have. the work that they do. <laughs> Not all of us. Um, and, and the, you know, the, the things that they, they discuss and all of that, and, um, and I just... I don't think, I just don't think that the timing is right here for this, uh, but because I think it's important to hear from yeah. from citizens, I'd be the same way. I mean, I've had a couple things out my way that, you know, um, that got this far, but they, no, I will say that they didn't get this far because the citizens came out strongly before it got to this point. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I most appreciated by the citizens out in my area, mm -hmm. uh, because they came out in strength and said, "Oh no, that's not what we're going to do." So now it seems like, you know, we're 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 going to throw a flag and say, even though we're ahead by one point, we're going into overtime. And that does that just I don't like that, and I don't like, again. We need to get this right. Well, maybe the we've all, we <coughs> we we based our decisions. Thinking we had it right based right. on all the work that's been done. Right. And I think it's borderline disrespectful to the, all the work that's been done. But again, you know how I'm going to vote on this, so maybe the debate's over because I do appreciate the citizens coming out. Uh, but I just, I don't. I'm not going to argue. Okay, on call, for, argue with call for a vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Aye, reluctantly. Against? Opposed. No. Okay, three, two. So just so I can be clear, was the motion specifically for the residential portion? You gotta watch, the, you gotta watch the video. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Because if not, I want another vote because <clears throat> I will not have this reopened for everything else. Okay. This is only for okay. that, so and I'm against that. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> I believe there's really a yeah. place for that here in this county. Yeah. Okay. So, but it, it, it's just that part only you thank you for your time this morning take care <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you quality performance review service for 911 operations mr campbell jack oh mr brown's out there okay cool <clears throat> good morning gentlemen good morning commissioners <clears throat> Commissioner used that, that term rather liberally. Thank you. Commissioners, uh, as you said, Commissioner Rossi, we're, we're here today to discuss quality performance review service for 911 operations. Specifically, uh, as referenced in the, uh, the brief, there's an industry standard for oversight of 911 operations, and it includes a, a thorough uh, quality performance review effort. Along those lines, or uh, as a result of of that oversight need. A request was put together and presented to the Maryland 911 board at their October 27th meeting, a, 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 I guess it's a, a week ago, requesting $140,759 to fund a proposed three-year agreement with the International Academies of Emergency Dispatch, it's known as IAED, to provide this much needed service. The board approved that request in the form of paying 100% of it as a result, there would be no county funding necessary to proceed if that's your discretion. Uh, the agreement proposed today will ensure that the service that we already uh, have with the I IAED for this service, a one-year term, would be extended seamlessly with, without interruption. And I believe that, uh, and I'm very happy to have uh, Jack Brown with us uh, to join me today. He's the manager of the Emergency Communications Center, 911 Center, and I think uh, you have documented the improvements from the yeah. existing contract. <clears throat> And we want to maintain, if not improve, uh, increase those improvements as a result of this. 
I think we should have to pay for ourselves. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> so what you have in people, sir. what you have in place is working now. It is. Um, so it is a requirement to do the quality assurance review of the of the right. protocols. Um, uh, short of having people, um, this is the the process that 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 we've gone through. Um, so the the numbers board does fund fund these types of things, um, and um, Ashley can. Ashley and Amanda can speak to some uh, improvements, but yes, we have seen a, a significant improvement over the past year of this process. And, and Commissioner, I apologize if I could like to recognize other mem important members of our staff. We have Ms. Ashley Bergen and Ms. Ms. Amanda Poor here. They're both assistant managers in Jack's operation. So thank you, ladies. I apologize. Well, it seems like a no-brainer to me if it's working and you want to do two more years, three more, three more years, then. And we roll right so i'll make the motion that we accept the funding offered by the 911 board and uh authorize the director of public safety to execute the proposed agreement with the uh ied including the payment of the bills second got a motion got a second any discussion on this seen here none all in favor aye, aye. aye. okay <clears throat> keep up the good thank work you, thank you commissioner absolutely thank you. thank you guys <clears throat> thank you ladies um, Excello Land Management System Annual Maintenance and Support Renewal. Seems like we do this every year. <laughs> Couldn't be annually. Never. Like Groundhog's Day. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. After those last two decisions you guys made, I have to make. I have to be. Okay, that's oh fine. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. The Office of Procurement and Cooperation with Technology Services requests your approval to award the renewal for the Acela Annual Maintenance and Support Services to Acela in the amount of $106,830.13. This amount is within the adopted budget. Good morning, Commissioners. Charlie Beckhart with Technology Services. With your concurrence today, we will execute year two of a three-year agreement with Acela for maintenance, uh, software support, and upgrades. As you're aware, Excella is at the core of our integrated land management system and is used every day by multiple agencies, which are mentioned in your executive summary, and uh, many of our external partners as well. And so um, this, is, uh, this is a routine renewal for software support. Even annual, I hear. <laughs> I'll make the motion board of commissioners award the renewal of the Excella annual maintenance and support services to, believe it or not, Excella. Really? <laughs> In the amount of one hundred six thousand eight hundred thirty dollars and thirteen cents. Second. Got a motion, second, and discussion. Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, he he's feeling bad over here, so I figured I'd go with okay. this. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Commissioner. Good day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was hard, wasn't it? Let's talk about the FY twenty three <laughs> cardiac devices grant application. It's close to my heart. Let's go. I've talked about really among myself. You, you, Charlie, you're pushing it down, Fraser. Let's talk about you're pushing it, Fraser. Oh, there they are. Is Michael here? He's out uh, walking down the hallway. Now. That's okay. right. Come on in. We are now going to talk about the FY23 cardiac devices grant application. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, here this morning to ask for the uh, matching grant from the MIMS 50-50 um, grant process. Annually, the uh, state offers out to the different jurisdictions the ability to, to match a state pricing to get a uh, grant, which is about 50% of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, right now, our total project that we submitted to the state was $63,720. Um, so we're looking for approval for the county matching of thirty one thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars and seven cents that's not what the paper says mike briefing paper says thirty three one thirty five fourteen uh so what 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 are you saying okay the the updated one is thirty one thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars and seven cents that's cheaper so you're on a you're on it a roll cheaper. baby i'm going the right way okay. <laughs> <laughs> going the right way um, with that so we did have to have some uh concessions through region three which is the different jurisdictions in the uh the state there um to where we instead of a 50 50 grant this year it was a 48 52 that's why we had some changes in the numbers okay 
Okay. We were going to we apply for uh, not for grant. We we we're going to pay for this ourselves originally. Is what you're saying? Then we got this grant to pay for half of it. Yeah, we were going to come then to you and come ask for this full I'm price. Sorry. We right. were going to come to you and ask for this full price, and then we were able to get into this grant process. Okay, oh. when you were going to come for us for full price, that wasn't in the budget? Yes, it is in the budget. It is in the budget? Yes, okay. Well, then how come the, the county match for the grant? It says it's not in the budget, not budgeted. No, it's, a, it's in the current budget. It's part of the funding as part of the complete package for staffing, fire, and EMS, including the equipment for the, um, chase cars. So now we're actually okay. So it is, it is in the budget, correct. isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So the grant came available, and we were able yeah. to reduce the cost. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It we're is saving money, commission. Yeah, I got that. But it, well, we're saving I just money, wanted... and it's in the budget okay. as That's opposed to what it's right. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So who captured the price? Because I apologize, I did not. What was it, Mike? Thirty one. Thirty one thousand eight hundred sixty seven dollars and seven cents is what I. Thirty one thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and seven cents. Sixty dollars. Okay. Seven cents. Seven okay, cents. Okay. Therefore, Got would it. you like to make the motion? Make the mo motion that the Board of County Commissioners approve this mission the FY twenty three cardiac monitor devices grant application and accept the award. Um, do I need to have that amount in there. The board authorizes thirty one thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and seven cents in matching funds if Second. awarded. I'm okay. opposed to the seven cents. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I got a motion. I got a second. I got discussion about seven cents. Hold on a second. <laughs> you got twenty bucks. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's talk about amendments to Carroll County Code of Public Law, Local Laws and Ordinances, Chapter Thirty Seven, Fire and Emergency Medical Services. Um, Chris, we have anybody on the phone for this? No, sir. Was just trying to catch up on that last motion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you get a seven cents, please let me know. Um, do we have anybody in the public that wants to talk on this? I, I, real quick. I, I didn't have time to give a card. If you're going to, I mean, let me know. Okay. I can. I'll give a card here to okay. seven. Okay. Michael Karolinko. Um, I am a county resident and president of the Carroll County Professional Firefighters and Paramedics. Um, I think the biggest thing I'd just like to say is uh, over the course, of especially the last four years, but you know, all the way back to 2017 when this whole process and conversation started, um, this board in particular has done a lot to move forward and get this process uh, moving and then continuing to move it forward. You know, obviously there's always concerns and there's things that poke up that um, with every facet of what we're facing, but um, I, I would like to take the opportunity. I think it's the last time of in this forum being able to stand in front of you in some kind of um, pertinent conversation to say thank you for the investment and for what you've done to move this forward. Um, you know, it, this is necessary. And I think the, fight, the future, you know, given all the, all the uh, continued uphill battles maybe we have and all the things that extend far beyond the fire and EMS service into kind of cultural and other concerns that we have right now, um, we're moving in a good direction. And I think that that started and that maintained momentum here within this board. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you for your open ear uh, through this whole process, uh, hearing on this. I think that at the, the end of this board's time, being able to pass chapter 37, um, you know, and obviously hearing our concerns leading up to it, um, is a is a great capstone to the, your tenure here. So uh, on uh, on our, uh, I guess on behalf of us, we thank you for that investment and um, that that movement. So we look forward to hearing the conversation. Thank you. Thanks, and I appreciate using the word capstone because I was thinking cradle to grave, and I don't want this to be in the grave. So <laughs> cradle to capstone is a much better way of capturing this. So uh, especially Chief? in their line of work, no graves. No graves. <laughs> Can I call you chief now? Uh, well, that, that's uh, up to you all. Okay, but, uh, go ahead. We, we've had our deliberations on chief. this. Um, there will be a, f a, a long future ahead, and hopefully it's going to be a very cooperative one between all the entities. Um, I can't stress enough the criticality of us being able to move forward uh, with our hiring. We're working every day right now with HR, developing a schedule. And at the same time, uh, the, the, the needs for emergency services are constant each day. It's becoming a greater challenge under our current staffing system. Uh, for example, we dispatched five ambulances the other day for someone that fell off a roof in Hampstead. Um, so we, the quicker we can get things in place, the better off. The you dispatched decision. five ambulances? Yes. 
because they were all understaffed and it took that many to get two people that could make a crew. Mm. And so the I, sooner we can get moving with the hiring. I thought it was a uh, I thought it was an MCI when it came across my phone. Yeah, well, I, I was on my way yeah, in, and I'm I sorry. almost acronyms, mass casualty incident. Yes, I almost um, I almost drove over things. there just, just so I could get in the back of an ambulance. When I looked at it, I said, "There's something going on." Yeah. Yes. And so I well, made a phone call, and they said, wow. "No, not really. Just can't get anybody over there." I'm like, oh, "Okay, never mind." Yeah. But there was no mu no mutual like support arrest from for DOA. Baltimore County or from uh, well we ended up the the unit from Baltimore County came in mutual aid from Upper Co yeah. which is right there at Hampstead so um, again passing chapter 37 will enable us to be able to move forward advertise the positions and uh, moving to hire the lieutenants first as we've discussed and then we're going to see where the hiring process is for all the other positions so yeah capturing these comments are very important on how we're moving forward I really appreciate it a lot of the work that's been done so and we have to maintain you. the quality of people that we're going to hire we're looking to get people that are going to stay here and people are going to come work in carroll county for not just monetary reasons because it's carroll county and we're going to try to create a very positive culture within fire and ems and people are going to want to come here to work it was his birthday the other day can you recruit him or is well, he, we did recognize you know, that and uh just that, as long just as saying. he can get through the physical ability test. <laughs> At his age? Forget it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Although Go I did, ahead. I did gain like three pounds last night with a birthday cake, but whatever. <laughs> you didn't give us any. So, so I'm just saying. So uh, I, was, I wasn't here for the hearing. Are you, you done, Mike? I don't want to cut yes, you I'm off. Yes, I'm done. Okay, good. <laughs> You and I cut each other off a lot, though. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, I wasn't here for the hearing. I did watch the hearing. Uh, I, I will again say that I was embarrassed by the hearing with some of the comments that were, were made there. Um, you know, what, what, what continues to challenge me is, you know, lost in the mix of all this glitz and glamour of, of uh, you know, well, that's what they do, so we have to do it, is the fact that we have an incredibly strong volunteer presence here mm -hmm. that needs not to be forgotten at any time soon. And I will continue to say that when, even when I'm not in this seat because we're only here because of the incredible amount of work that the volunteers have done in this county. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, I do have a question on the overtime. Um, I'm the, the can can we just quickly sure. sit on that for a minute and go over that real yes and you you sent us something um, about the what the law enforcement is getting here uh, and I want to just briefly touch on that and this is where we need to get it right does come into play because we haven't done this yet so now you can use, we need to get this right. No, wait a minute, you're picking and choosing what I can use. You that, I'm right. picking on you, Weaver, because I can. You well, I believe we need to do it right. <laughs> okay. that, 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 was a, that was a big, wan, small world co comment. Don't worry about it. Right. Do it right. So, yeah, so let's touch on that again. Yeah, so I think everybody understands. We're, we're following the letter of the law, Fair Labor Standards Act, and what's known as the 207K exemption. So anyone who is a fire and EMS person, meaning they're credentialed to do both. Or just fire. Or just fire uh, falls under the exemption, which means that uh, we're going to base it on a 28-day work cycle. So in that 28-day work cycle with the 2472 shift configuration, uh, they will come out at the end of that 22 days if they work no extra time working 168 uh, hours. The threshold for overtime is 212 hours. So that leaves them 44 hours short of being able to make overtime. So when we Over, have- Overtime being defined as time and traditionally a half. time and a half. Yes. Okay. So the scenario is if I work an extra shift, I'm working that at straight time. If I'm working at Pleasant Valley and we get a cardiac arrest at 6 a.m., we normally relieve at seven. I don't get back till nine. I'm getting two hours of my straight time pay. And so in comparison with um, 
other agents, the only other agency that's under a 207K exemption would be the sheriffs. It's defined a little bit differently of law enforcement versus fire EMS. But the reality is if they work over on a call, they will get time and a half. And if they work extra shifts, they will get time and a half. So, and that's um, based on their shift configuration now. Uh, correct. So they're working in a two-week cycle, and in that two-week cycle, it's I believe it comes out to 86 hours or 80 hours. But the bottom line is they get time and a half overtime for everything beyond that. Beyond 80 hours. Yes. Okay. Now, understand that this doesn't mean if we – if the decision was made to pay the overtime no one's going to get that overtime unless they work extra time so it wouldn't be each pay period that all x number of personnel are going to get automatically 44 hours of time and a half you'll only get it when you work that so, extra right so the challenge will be hour or two or three right. right so every hour beyond that if you would uh, decide to go in the other direction would be at time and a half so we don't anticipate in the first two years that being much because all leave will be scheduled. There'll be unanticipated sick leave, but we're going to have um, four floaters between in this fiscal year, then next year adding two floaters. So that gives us six mm -hmm. positions to backfill on duty without paying overtime. So the overtime would be infrequent. Um, Moving forward in the future, there's going to be an increased liability for overtime. We're going to see people that modify duty, pregnancy, what have you. Right. Um, but um, so in planning for this, we just went by the letter of the law, which was follow the 207K exemption and uh, good, bad, or indifferent, working the shortest work week that's available for fire and EMS, 42 hours, which is an optimal shift, you end up with that deficit. Um, we also, I did a survey through the Maryland Metro Chiefs and only got a few respondents, but um, the jurisdictions that did respond are paying time and a half for everything. They already made that decision uh, going forward. And if you saw my survey, um, you saw the amount of money that some of the jurisdictions were paying, which struck me because one of them I know was Queen Anne's County, which they're not even staffing fire, they're just staffing EMS. and. Uh, the other counties that responded and uh, then our friend across the river in Fairfax County I know if you saw that 39 million dollars mm -hmm. oh my goodness for overtime yeah. in one year that, that's a little bit different because yeah. of the, the, the different the, scenario the number they, of bodies coming into play and that's yeah that's huge so yes. uh, not the bodies are huge the amount of right right number of number of bodies some of the bodies may be huge so that's where we are in terms of making that decision if there's anything negative about it it would be we if we can't find people to work overtime because they have to reach that threshold they may decide hey we're not working overtime then the right. scenario that presents itself would be something called a holdover so you're planning on getting off right. at seven o'clock this morning you've got some family event or vacation planned we're going to it's mandatory part of your job condition that we're holding you over you're not going home so two two problematic things with that number one it's not going to make employees happy we don't see that happening much but the other issue is going to be we've now got a person who's worked for 24 hours and in places like Westminster and Sykesville in that 24 hours they may have run 20 calls so they're now fatigued and the question becomes is uh, what's their judgment and decision making capability a couple of just quick um, questions one is is there um, in this a periodic review like every two years you will be going through this or every five years or this is this will be in your ordinance so you have you to know, open it so back up right go through I'm sorry you'd have to open it back up you'd have to have open to it back up, back up public hearing that, process yeah. so so once you make the decision I would say it's pretty difficult to go backwards and to take away if you were to go up to the you know say they uh, staff members, firefighters, and fire EMS would start receiving overtime at a certain number of hours, yeah. 168 or, or right. somewhere right. that you have to at 212, but it's somewhere in between then. Um, to go backwards and to reduce that down yeah. to the 168, I would say would probably be very difficult. Yeah. yeah. The, the other thing okay. that I just think okay. is important to mention is we will be hiring some employees that are paramedics only, right. meaning they have no firefighter qualifications. So under FLSA, if all they do is EMS, they're 
automatically anything after 40 hours they'll be paid a time and a half so what we're doing within the workforce by uh, the result of that is creating some disparity uh, among those employees and that's that's just something that you know we'll have okay. to deal with the, um, that is the federal law too yes, I mean we're, we're following not, the law okay. you know we didn't decide that the mandatory holdover yes. scenario uh, is that time and a half granted no that'll be at straight time till they reach that 44 hour threshold if they're a firefighter or firefighter EMS. if they're a paramedic and they're on a mandatory holdover then automatically they get overtime starting at minute okay. number one Chief Robinson, I want to express my sincere appreciation to you doing the research and analysis on all this to give us an in-depth understanding and the county administrator for forwarding it to us. And I think it, these numbers put things in perspective. Looking at the Frederick County numbers, they said he had $6.8 in overtime associated in fiscal year 22, and he only had $3.7 million budgeted. So that shows the exposure that takes place with bringing it down. And also, I really appreciate your clarification on the difference in the law enforcement hours versus the hours used by EMS staff staying on, you know, 24 hours, whatever the cycle is. So it does create a different scenario. These numbers are very informative, so thank you. Well, and I'm not going to take credit. It's a team effort here. So between uh, the county administrator, Office of Budget, and uh, the comptroller particularly, um, Cheryl and payroll, uh, they have a very good working knowledge of this and how it's going to impact everything. So Thanks uh, for giving them recognition. Well, that's what it's all about is we're a team here and we can't do it all <laughs> ourselves and we want to make sure we're giving you valid information. Thank you very much. That's good. <laughs> okay. Valid information is important. Yeah, val valid is good. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, I don't like the discrepancy between what the paramedics will get on overtime and what the firefighters and EMS will get on overtime. I, I, I think that's potential for causing some problems within the firehouse, and I don't like the discrepancy for what the sheriff's department's getting over time, what the fire and EMS getting over time. I, I, don't, I don't like that either. I think my opinion, I'm only one, weave her back off, uh, that if, <laughs> look at the way he's glaring at me. <laughs> that if yet, <laughs> yet, he said yet. <laughs> that if you work overtime, you should get time and a half. That's my opinion of it. Uh, if it's if it's one hour, if you're held or over beyond your scheduled, let's just beyond your scheduled hours because yes, yeah, yes, that's what. If you work beyond your scheduled hours, you should get time and a half. My opinion to include the mandatory overtime or mandatory holdover. Uh, I, yes, that includes that. Yeah, that's fine. I, I hope we get away from this mandatory holdover stuff. I'm, if, if I am happens, incredibly I against that, and, and I hope that discussion stops. Yeah. Because I hope that you set yourself up that, and I know you will, Mike. You and your team will set us up that that will rarely happen, because working 24, been there, done that. Yep. I don't even want to. I don't even want you to whisper to me anything about M H O. Yeah. So I don't want to hear it. Is that an acronym? Yeah, another one. Um, <laughs> if we decided, I, I'm, I'm hung up on this letter of the law that we keep talking about. If we decide that we don't want to go by the 207K when it comes, when it pertains to the overtime, what does that mean to this letter of the law no, conversation? Nothing. Nothing? So it's that, totally that's, your that's purely the prerogative of the governmental okay. agency. Yeah. Employees you are. have to pay, um, you know, um, some overtime rate after 212 hours. Okay. Prior to that, if you want to be more generous, you're welcome to do so. Okay. Uh, I'm going to agree with my colleague. Do it all the time. <laughs> uh, I truly believe that um, the time and a half is important, especially coming off of a 24. Uh, and again, I've I've lived it. Uh, and I appreciated that and I sincerely believe that it's not going to be a huge impact fiscally to us for at least the first two th or three years. It might after that once we get the force to the numbers that we're hoping we get them to uh, but I just don't know that it's going to be that huge of a fiscal impact. Yeah. 
uh, at this point. So uh, I'm all about Chapter 37. Uh, I'm ready to make that motion with the exception of adding the fact that if you work over your scheduled time, you would receive time and a half. That's my motion. Is that actually a motion? Yes, that's, I'm going to make that motion. It's still open for discussion, but I'll move that we adopt Chapter 37 with the change of anything, regardless of title, over your scheduled time gets you time and a half. I'll second that. Okay, I got a motion. I got a second open for discussion. When you said regardless of title. Well, because we were, we were talking about paramedics right. versus fire firefighter EMS and supervision and supervisors are regardless of oh. no, no no wait a minute still not no. pay overtime to exempt employees yeah this is only for non-exempt this is okay, non-exempt non okay yeah, let me add that I want to be clear yeah. yeah. non-exempt employees and I don't get over okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you I'll I'd like to get some I'll second that amendment that Stern amended Stoner's getting ready to pick up a chair and throw it at me but non-exempt <laughs> employees okay what what impact does this have love, on our budget you, <laughs> right that so, would I, I, my, oh, go ahead. I apologize. So I got a motion that has been now amended uh, and a second to that amended motion. Um, the discussion is now open and your, your question is about the budget. What, is this what impact does this have on our budget? Um, I, I would uh, concur with um, Commissioner Wance that probably in the first two years and um, Myself and my staff, we're running, we've run these multiple scenarios of what's going to happen. I, I think we're being responsible out of the gate by having scheduled leave and your approval of allowing us to have floaters up to six on each shift is going to offset, uh, I would say, at least for the first two years, because of our numbers, going to offset the majority of that. Um, we're going to be keeping the data on all of that because it's all through the VTI system and we're not going to be the only ones monitoring that. Budget's going to be monitoring that. Payroll's going to be monitoring that. And uh, we hope to be able to forecast where that may occur. Well, what is unforeseen is we could have another COVID or a similar pandemic that could have a bigger impact. But again, that would be an emergent situation that we would you know, the whole county government would be managed differently in a situation like that. So okay. I, I see it being minimal impact at this time, but where the real impact might be is several people each week are probably going to get a late shift call, and we're looking at an hour, two hours here and there, which is really negligible. The, the impact's about $12 an hour per employee per hour. The impact, so, so I, I believe I understand what's been shared, there is a greater impact expected in the outer years. Yes. Because the force will be put together. Because we get a force multiplier in there. Exactly. So in years four, five, and six, yeah. you know, has a potential of being a concern. But the first two, three years, you know, it's, it's negligible. Yeah. So, yes. okay. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Don't don't approve that motion. Uh, we have some technical difficulties with it. Sure. Yeah. Our, our excellent payroll manager sure. wants to make sure that we get this right. So I believe we need to say, and Cheryl, correct me if I'm wrong, that they that the over the time and a half for non-exempt employees would occur after they've reached the 160. Eight hours. Okay, you want to get to the table? In excess of 168 sure. hours in the 28-day period. Yes. Or if I could come up. Yeah. Or there's, there's no. There's no. There's no oars. Um. <laughs> Unless you're on a boat. <laughs> um, we need kind of like a base for the pension and stuff like that. So when if you want to be more liberal on the 207k, you can pick a period of time, like 14-day period. And you could set a quota. You don't have to. Like the 168 is based on he's trying to do it like on a, a four week cycle, the 42 hours a week. Right. So it's really 212, anything. But they would technically be working 168 hours in that four week. And then the law provides for it anything over that amount. 
for the pension and stuff like that, uh, if you want to technically use it, you can always be more liberal, but you need to drill down to the pay period. Like either choose a 14 day cycle and that's 106 hours, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And um, you can make it more liberal, anything over the base of 80 hours in a two week period. Well, and, um, for that, or you could go the 14. The but their base. schedule is so odd. Um, they'll earn, they'll work a lot of hours in one two week period and very few hours in the second. That's why we're going with the 28 day period, is my understanding. Right. So, so we're working. So Three, if, even for the hour weeks and one twenty-four hour week. Yeah. So even if we, uh, the baseline for the pension can still be the twenty-eight days period. You could. Yeah. Yeah. That that's where I was gonna. Yeah. That was my question. Why not just make the pension base, the base salary, the one sixty-eight. One sixty-eight or whatever right. it is. Yeah. I guess what it depends on how you write the 207k and how you do that if you have that thing but I'm not very familiar enough to say and talk about the pension side of it I'm only familiar okay. with the 207k the so payments. I don't think I don't if the 168 hours is a base then you would make the overtime if you want to be more liberal you could say uh, you want to pay at the 168 hours right. after it reaches the four week period in the 28 days. That was your intent, right? That was my intent, yes. Okay. Yeah. That was my intent on the second as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Just making sure. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get, I don't want to get in there and start messing with pension right. stuff. Right. That's a yeah. whole nother. Exactly. That is a whole different. So I believe the pension's still going to be based on a 2080 hour annual base versus the 2186 that on based on the schedule is what they right yes. right okay yeah. different. That's so is that clear as mud then yes. not well it's clear on the 207 what your, yeah. okay. your impact is but okay yeah all right i was just thrown off when you said liberal a couple times in this conversation <laughs> but that's a different topic well different it's time. being more generous i understand generous. Yeah. <laughs> i guess it's go. the word that i used so right. it's just being more generous. <laughs> okay. Um, so my my yeah. motion stands mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. making sure that the number's correct. But we're here for another 31 days. If you need to come back to us because of that pension thing, we'll make you've sure got time. Not a problem. Um, okay. in, in case there's a tweak that needs to be done. But the intent here that we did was mm -hmm. to make sure that that time and a half was after. 168 hour, hour in the 28 day period in the 28 day period for non-exempt employees. <laughs> non employees i'm just glad All people are paying attention and yeah. here right away no, on this that this was is great. great oh yeah we have just in time delivery this? okay walmart may not but we do <laughs> <laughs> i got a motion i got a second i got clarification and discussion is there any further clarification or discussion necessary at this time Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. A lot of work. Okay. Let's talk about the uh, Charles Carroll Community Center, the Ruling Associates Incorporated. Uh, activity or work that's being done. Hello. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with Bureau of Building Construction, requests your approval to increase the contract to Ruling Associates for testing and inspection services in the amount of $50,000. Commissioners, a majority of these additional costs are associated with the unforeseen circumstances during site development at the beginning of the project. This amount is within the adopted budget, and no additional funds will be necessary. Okay. Who wants to talk? Good morning, Commissioners. Well, talk to us about what Ruling Incorporated is going to do. Yes. Um, good morning. The Bureau of Building Construction is here for you today to request board approval to award additional testing and inspection services to Ruling Associates, as stated. Ruling 
is a term contracting firm to perform construction related material inspections and testing for the Charles Carroll Community Center project. Those testing inspection services include compaction, concrete breaks, and proof rolling of the subsoil in preparation of the above mentioned. We are currently at 80% completion of site work. We estimate two to three months of additional testing and inspection services. Thus, the remaining 20% of testing and inspection services includes, includes the above mentioned and also the D-cell lane, which is yet to start, as uh, I spoke with Commissioner Lance the other day. Um, our original budgeted amount for this was 178300 the original estimated cost that we came before you uh, beforehand for Rolling Associates was 32993 Again, as mentioned, the additional services is estimated at 50000 which brings us to a total of 82993 which is still under um, estimated budget. These costs are, yeah, and no additional funds are requested, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I'm happy okay. to answer any questions that you may have. You, know, you you hit stuff you didn't think you were going to hit, uh, so yeah, they got to keep making sure that we're not going <coughs> to have any ramifications or whatever after that. So it's in with it's within the budget. So I, you know we got to keep these guys engaged up there. So I'll move we increase contractor ruling in the amount of fifty thousand dollars. Second. No bodies found. What's that? No bodies found. <laughs> <laughs> got a motion, got a second. Still looking for Chuck. Haven't found him yet. Have you found him yet? I have not. No, Chuck's up there somewhere, we think. Yes. <laughs> Chuck Carroll. You're, you're f very from You're BFFs. You're very familiar with him. That's why you call him Chuck. A lot of people call him Charles, but, you know. Okay. Any Yay. further <laughs> discussion on this? No. Seeing here, none all in favor? Uh, Aye. Can we oh. talk about that? <coughs> okay. Let's talk about the three options. <clears throat> the point, County Commissioner, on how to address the existing condition of the upper parking lot, Charles Carroll Community Center. So you're going to give us three options, huh? Good morning, Commissioners. Okay. Thank you again for your time this morning. Um, again, we're here before you to discuss Charles Carroll Community Center. <clears throat> uh, joining me today is Deputy Director Eric Burdine. Kirk Engel, our project manager for the project. Um, we are here to present three paving options to what we refer to as the upper parking lot at the community center. This was the, or is the existing <coughs> parking lot that has been there and uh, was used to service the tennis courts, basketball courts, and now is incorporated into the overall design and parking for the community center. So uh, we had met with our general contractor. We had performed some additional uh, geotechnical testing and evaluations of the subgrade condition of that parking lot. Based on that information, our contractor has three options that we wanted to bring before you this morning and hopefully get your uh, direction on which one of these three options to proceed with and Kirk's going to present these two these three options to you um, and then afterwards if you have any questions comments we'll be happy to address those thank you good morning again commissioners all three options are based on the useful life and respective paving um, options, uh, as John mentioned, um, upon frequency of use and the types of vehicular traffic uh, that will be using uh, the community center grounds. Option one is per the contract with North Point Builders, this is built in already uh, within their line item, includes for milling and overlaying of the existing parking lot with no subgrade repairs. The lifespan under this option is two to five years. No additional funds for this option will be needed. <clears throat> option two is using a geotextile fabric. This is an overlay and apply surface course of paving over top of that overlay. The cost for option two includes 
forty thousand per the contract work that was originally uh, built in within the budget, and an additional fifty six. This is what the cost is for this option, fifty six thousand. Now wait a minute, say that again, Kirk. Forty thousand was is what's in the budget. Forty forty thousand was the contract work. So this, if we if we pick option two, we're looking at another an additional sixteen thousand. No. no, no, an additional yeah. all fifty-six. The, all the prices that he's given you are above, are over and above the original contract okay. value. Uh, the original contract value for for all three of these options, the, option one, uh, that would cost you no extra, was forty thousand. That's what they have in the budget for okay. that work. Okay, all right. Everything else, every, everything else, all the other changes are subtracted that out. Okay, me. all right. Um, lifespan under this scenario is approximately 10 years. The contractor stated in the event paving repairs or repaving work is needed, it will be costly and difficult to remove the geotextile fabric. However, in, sp in speaking with Bosley uh, Contracting, who's a contractor on site that will be doing this work, they have used this option many times in Baltimore County with very good results. Also, in speaking with our facilities department, they have had good results as well in the two times that they have used it um, as well. Option three is a complete removal and replacement. This option will have a lifespan of approximately 20 plus years. This cost would be 161360 Although this is the most costly option, it is our recommendation to proceed with this option. It will provide a long-lasting product and will best serve the users of the community center by new for the new parking lot for many years mm -hmm. to come you know if you look at these three you have a band-aid a bigger band-aid and do it right <laughs> well that's one way to look that's, were you that's done a good way to put it yeah i'm sorry <laughs> done? I, I was okay but that if we're going to do it i mean we've got a new center there got everything and i've learned one thing if you're going to do it don't half way do it Oh, almost said the wrong thing <laughs> um but um you know i think we have to do it that's going to last for a period of time i know don't have a heart attack on me at your age do it right we need to do this right is that what you were yes getting? yes i'm using that term again you got me started now it's kind of wonky <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't scoot move. anywhere <laughs> as long as it, you don't scoot anywhere if option one is utilized how long would it last that's the two to two to that's five years and it's, it's, five it's years. the two to five yeah. years and i even asked is there any subgrade work that would happen and those of you that were on site for the tour whether you've come back and uh viewed the site or not it is in bad shape uh there are alligator cracks what they call alligator cracks all over the upper parking lot um it's it's rough so fell there, it is so literally it just a it is so it actually fell there that's how bad it is <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to bring that up commissioner but I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd help him back <laughs> up but, uh, <laughs> so I mean it is literally just a mill of what's existing and overlay on top of that and that is it no subgrade work or anything like that um, again option two is basically using this <coughs> uh, geotextile fabric which is very strong it it works very well um, I even spoke with the manufacturer. I said, is there a warranty or a, um, you know, somewhat of a guarantee as to how long this lasts? And there's just too many variables involved as far as what, what kind of traffic is on there, you know, what types of vehicles and so forth. Um, so, again, that's going to last you a good 10 years or more. Um, how, long, how long has this geotech fabric been used in construction in parking lots? Oh, many years. So it's got a history of, of oh yes yeah yeah so it holds up we, well we what is the we had selected the mid grade um, because it comes in a five, what they call a 500 a 600 and a 700 um, 500 is just your very basic 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 you know driveways things of that sort okay. 600 are used for you know business areas uh, parking lots things of that sort community centers if you want to apply it to this project um, 700's overkill because um, we originally thought, oh gosh, well, I guess we need 700, but that's mainly used on bridges, overpasses, things of that sort. So uh, the, the 600 grade is is the 56 that I presented to you. So with the 600 grade on a parking lot, the projections only is only going to last for 10 years. 10 to, 
10 years, give or take, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Why was this not budgeted in the original cost estimate? When, when we originally looked at the project, we, we thought a mill and overlay would be sufficient for that parking lot. Um, and, and, you know, the, the geotechnical ha has confirmed we could still do a mill and overlay, but um, it's not going to last as long so as... You're, I mean, you're coming to us now <clears throat> for better solutions. Why would you think that option one, the mill and overlay, would have been suitable? I mean, Maybe. yes, it's, you know, it's feasible, but it doesn't sound like it's, you know, the correct course of action to take. Yeah, I mean, so th it's it's been uh, more years than we anticipated for this project to get off the ground and running and, and constructed. Um, so the, the parking lot has degraded uh, more than we anticipated it to degrade over that time. And the construction traffic hasn't helped. This is about as close to a, a change order as I'm going to see without calling it a change order because the original estimate was the option one, the mill and overlay, and now you're coming to us <clears throat> wanting 100, not you, I apologize, but collectively 160,000 more to get it done right. I'd actually say it's real, almost a change in scope, um, you know, of the project because this wasn't, this, you know, totally renovating the parking lot wasn't um, anticipated initially, so. Yeah. yeah. It's really bigger which, than a change order in some respects. Which makes it even more concerning that we didn't see this scope, we didn't see this as a part of the overall scope of the community center. Well, with all due respect to our staff, we were they were focused on the building and the yeah. site and, mm -hmm. and I don't know that there was a whole lot of attention paid to the parking lot uh, and it was still being utilized it was there was parking there every day because the ball field was still being used uh, so I'm I would I mean I just I I, I I get that but yet in the grand scheme of things uh, the deeper you got into this project the more that we saw that it just that isn't going to cut it and again, as you say, we didn't anticipate the, de the <coughs> delay because, uh, you know, I warned Kirk many times if I didn't walk in the door as a commissioner that he was fired. <laughs> um, so there was that because it, it did get delayed by, you know, COVID knocked the crap out of the project. Uh, so, um, and then finally, again, we were, I think, focusing on the project itself and the parking lot below and not necessarily looking at what was above. But in order to do the project, a lot of things have been parked there over the last year and a half. Uh, big stuff. So it's contributed to the, to the, uh, to the degrading of the, of the surface up there. Yeah, I'm not against this. Yeah. So I'm, I just I'm asking the hard questions because, yeah. again, we're using not you know we're using above and beyond and it's our taxpayers and you know we've already gone through this where not everybody was for putting charles carroll in place you know and you know most of us were um this is above and beyond so that's why i'm understood commissioner and, and, and we we were we were i mean the budget that we were originally handed was not was really not sufficient for the for the project so we i mean we did we were trying to pull everything in that we could and this was i mean we thought we could we thought we we honestly thought that we could um mill and overlay this parking lot but again time yeah. time hasn't been kind to it and neither has been the construction traffic if we use the geotech 700 material how long would the parking lot last then as opposed to the 600. The contractors estimating you, you could probably get a 10, 10 plus years. They've they've had it they've had it um, down in parking lots where it's well over 10 years old. Um, hey, you're talking the, about the, he's 700. Talking about oh, the 700. 700. Oh, the 700. 700. I, I don't know that that makes much of a difference. I, I think our our big concern after talking to the contractor about about that option is what we do in the future. If if we if we ever do want to pull this parking lot up, and and do what we were saying now, which is completely remove and replace, that fabric makes it a lot more difficult. And expensive. Uh, it's not something that's going to be easily milled and overlaid at a, at a future point. You, you, you'll be able to overlay it, uh, you'll just have to do a very thin milling, so the parking lot will continue to get thicker. 
I guess is what, what it's about the base it's gone it's somehow and I think running heavy equipment over it has just shown where the weak points are and you put fabric over top yes the fabric's tough and it's going to hold I don't think it's that hard to take up but um, the material is going to sink the same places yeah. we're not doing anything other than here again putting a bigger band-aid on a yeah. problem and no. our, pro our responsibility is to solve problems I don't like the cost overrun I don't like where this is going but sometimes things happen I mean a challenge I mean I applaud the work you're doing there's no doubt you know the challenge is measuring twice cutting once you know and having the ability to foresee these concerns as construction occurs um, but uh, I get it I mean it's it's hard work and it's sometimes harder to come in front of us and say this is additional cost that we need but uh, I mean it like you said it's the right thing to do and I do take the analogy band-aid bandage or get it done right and fix so so based on option two or three are those costs that you've put here locked is this yes because yeah because um blacktop and I know. all associated costs are going up every i was going to say every day but i think it's almost like every hour now yeah, it's ridiculous it's crazy uh so but if we do this today we're locked yes yes so sir i know you're a distance away from doing this yes when we do it yeah, the base paving is going down today uh, on the lower parking lot. So that is happening as we speak. Um, and that's a great question, Commissioner, because uh, as I know, with the fluctuality of where things are, um, you know, I needed a, as up to date ticker tape <laughs> type of pricing as there was. And as speaking with them yesterday, that's it's good. So that was your birthday present saying it was a great question. So just. <laughs> can we get a better price from the contractor I mean they've been the ones deteriorating the parking lot faster running across it with heavy equipment uh, tell them to cut us a break split the difference uh, yeah that's 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 certainly part of construction I, I can't I can't say I, I wouldn't say that that that's in this case, if we, if we gave them a brand new parking lot that didn't have the alligator cracks that allowed the water to flow through, I, I think that construction equipment wouldn't have caused as much damage. So I mean, you know, we could we could say we probably should have over over you know did a mill and overlay before we started the con the construction. So I mean, there's a I lot just of ways wondering. to look at it. Possibility. I I don't know. I mean, have you asked? No, we have not asked for uh, on that. But um, I yeah. pretty much know what the answer is going to be. Yeah. But. Mr. Burdine, that was a good point. I'm wondering, did our staff pick on up, pick up on this initially and go to the contractor, or did a contractor pick up on it and bring it to us? We, our staff Kurt, recognized yeah, yeah, Kirk it. and I and, and John met on site, and we were looking at it, and we, and we decided, yeah, we're, originally we thought we could do a mill and overlay, but this just doesn't look like we should do that. Well, that's reassuring to me because I have concerns that sometimes a contractor can get into a job and recognize such as cost increases and bring back a revision to cover up their shortcomings. But your reply reassured me that that did not happen, so thank you. So moving the money on options two and three, and that's kind of where we're leaning towards. Deb, I see you're here, and there's a two alpha, two bravo, three alpha, three bravo. I think we're gonna get into an agreement of option three. Um, is there a recommended from you on how to move the money Dad? it's on option look on the second oh, yeah. it's right no, no, i know but there's oh, a okay. 3a 3b yeah. oh, okay yes we we have uh funds in our um general government unallocated account that can we can easily move into this project if you choose to if you choose option two or three so you think that's the best approach in moving yes. money okay so 3a is what you're looking at yep so i'll move the board of commissioners approve resolution CTEC 23.03 to transfer $161,360 from general government un unallocated to Charles Carroll Community Center. Second. Got a motion. I got a second. Any further discussion? 
<clears throat> Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Day 4 1. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Thank you. So we had to do option the yeah. first well, motion first. You got the money. Let's put some blacktop down. Yeah. <laughs> Running out of time. You'll see some today if you want to drive up. <laughs> oh, I see. So it's yeah, three A to first yeah. step in three B. Now we got a blacktop. Got it. We were the board of county committee. I, I apologize. <laughs> Directed Bureau of Building Construction to accept the change order for option three to remove. And replace the existing parking lot at the Charles Carroll Community Center in the amount of $161,360 on the upper parking lot at the Charles Carroll Community Center. Second. Got a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank let's you. talk about Carroll County Resource Recovery Park Conceptual Design and Northern <laughs> Landfill Ex expansion master plan RFP <clears throat> somewhere on here is a presentation it starts with good morning and it's good afternoon so you're already yeah, wrong. no it is already okay well, I do have a cliffs note version of this so we can do a little more quickly if needed <clears throat> but good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for having us today. Uh, we're here today to discuss the proposals that we've received uh, for development of the Northern Landfill Master Plan uh, and to request concurrence to proceed with service agreements for the project. Uh, we're joined here today uh, by Mr. Andrew Kays uh, and John Schott of the Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority. Andrew's the executive director, uh, and John is the pri primary project manager. He's also the one that's been the project manager for all the current contracts that we have. Uh, both of them were very instrumental uh, in getting us to this point. Uh, your purchase of land recently surrounding uh, Northern Landfill has really changed the focus uh, and the future, allowing us to pursue the goal of a generational sustainable solution for our fund. That's really what this uh, project is all about. Uh, it gets us going down that path. And funds for the master plan are included in the current CIP project. Uh, so everything that we're discussing today uh, is currently funded. There we go. So on April 1st of 2022, in concert with the Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority, an RFP was issued for developing the comprehensive master plan uh, for the property at Northern Landfill. Now the RFP scope included, among other things, a thorough evaluation of the acquired 326 acres. We really want to know what we can put where and what we can't put where. Uh, the Northern Landfill expansion, which would extend the life of the facility, but also give us future options. Again, just because we may have permitted airspace in the future doesn't mean we have to use it, but it's better that we do have it. Uh, new transfer station location and design, and we've been down that road before as to why that's needed. Uh, consolidated homeowner use area for residential uh, drop-off of waste and recyclables. Uh, as you likely know, today we have two separate facilities, one of which is not in good shape. Uh, scale house and maintenance shop, both of which will be in the new footprint uh, of the future landfill. Uh, potential entrance and internal roadway improvements. Uh, potential for rail access. We definitely want to do a deep exploration on that. Uh, and a resource recovery park conceptual layout, which would enable us to pursue options beyond what we do today. And we never know what's gonna come down the pike from the state, better to try to be ahead of it than behind it. So in response to the RFP, we received five best and final proposals uh, from consultant teams. Now the primary responders are on this list, but each one uh, brought to the table a team of consultants, additional planners, et cetera. Those uh, five, rep five proposals were received from ARM Group, uh, Columbia, Maryland, EA Engineering Science and Technology of Hunt Valley, Geosyntech Consultants, Columbia, Maryland, SCS Engineers, Columbia, Maryland, uh, and Tetra Tech with offices in Germantown. So each of the consultants does have a local presence to one degree or another. <clears throat> These proposals were evaluated by a review team consisting of staff from both the authority and from Carroll County DPW. Given the depth and breadth of the proposal and our goals uh, in this project, 
A scoring system was set up to emphasize the offering team's technical proposal, which includes qualifications, experience, and their proposed work plan to get us to the goals that we want. So 80% of the review score was based on that technical proposal. In fact, during the review, we looked at the technical proposal before we even looked at the cost proposal. We didn't want to be prejudiced one way or the other uh, based on their cost. The remaining 20% uh, is related to cost, including staff billable rates, and also their proximity to the county. We want to make sure that people are nearby, or, or preferably nearby, who can work on the project. So the review team evaluated the technical proposals independently and essentially came up with the following scoring. So based on the evaluations, one through five is, is the bottom line ranking. We didn't want to get into small score uh, minutiae that way. But essentially, the review team uh, is rec has recommended that EA Engineering and Technology, uh, as the one most likely to deliver the best overall value to Carroll County in this project. EA's comprehensive, detailed work plan, combined with the very experienced team that they've assembled for this project, is believed to best address the stated RFP goals. One thing I want to keep in mind, again, this is not a lump sum contract. The tasks will take the hours that the tasks will take in order to become accompl get accomplished, and only actual work will be ex expended and billed. The bottom line is this is a very large, multi-year effort across 326 acres of property, and we believe this deep, deep dive effort is needed from the start to deliver and deliver develop. I'm sorry, and ultimately deliver a sound long-term plan, which of course is our stated goal. And the next steps from here, after a discussion, I'm sure, uh, the Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority Board of Directors did meet in October, uh, and also approved EA recommended EA contingent on Carroll County's decision. So it really is all up to us. Uh, the other reason that was done in October is, if I'm not mistaken, there's no November meeting, and we wanted to try to make sure we put this, uh, this recommendation before this board before the end of the current session. If the Board of County Commissioners concurs, uh, the Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority would finalize the master plan service agreements with the consultant in the county by the end of November, and the consultant would hit the ground running in December. And at this time, the entire team here can answer any questions that you may have. Well, I like the amount of effort that's been put into this. I know how important it is to your department. It's a, uh, it's a tough pill to swallow seeing that would go to the highest contractor, but there obviously has to be some reasoning in this. And sometimes you see contractors don't fully understand the scope of the work that's requested and potentially things are overlooked. But I'd really like to hear something from the authority to chime in on this, to back up this avenue you want us to go on to reassure us that this is the right decision to make because there's gonna be some backlash potentially from the citizens about awarding to the highest bidder. It kind of defies what we're used to. But if there's logic behind that, I'd love to hear it from the professionals and the authority. Oh, sure. Uh, Commissioners, good afternoon. Thank you again. My name is Andrew Kayes. I'm with the Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority. Um, the approach that the RFP process allows us to take is to build what we think is the best overall proposal for a project. And so as Cliff mentioned, we did look at the technical approach, the technical qualifications, and the approach that each of the vending team, uh, contractor teams looked at. And we independently, and then as we discussed, came together and, realized, and, and came to the conclusion that EA presented what we felt was the best understanding of what the project wants to be as it was explained by Carroll County. Uh, so it, it was, uh, recognizing the complexity of the project, I mean, it is a big opportunity with the property that you have and then the breadth of services that you're seeking. Um, and then EA was able to drill into their proposal and really present a solid understanding, at least an understanding that we felt was very akin to our understanding of what we were saying we wanted uh, for the county. It is uh, different 
then uh, a typical bid process, which usually goes qualifications, then lowest price. The RFP process allows that flexibility, where we're not governed by lowest price, where we may see uh, change orders, but rather we can look at the narrative around the wording for each of the tasks to make sure that what is being offered as a recommendation meets our needs. And I apologize, I'm saying our, the county's needs. It's our, we're a team. Well, and if I may, Commissioner, I'd, I'd like to add just a little bit to that. Um, I think I think it's all four, well, I know it's all four of our um, opinions that the team that was presented, the, the actual people that will be working on this, the, the, the consultants, the sub-consultants that were, that were proposed, uh, we felt this team was far and above the best team that was that was uh, uh, proposed to us. <coughs> One of the things as well, when Andrew is mentioning about you know depth of understanding and depth of how to attack the work plan, that directly translates into the number of hours that are you know proposed uh, by each of the uh, the consultant teams. Uh, there was a significant difference in amount of hours, uh, and we believe directly resulting in a difference in amount of effort you know, that may be put forth uh, into the project, uh, in some cases significantly. Those two, com those two items combined, the hours that were proposed and also uh, the subcontractors, uh, you know, one or two in particular, who are very, very well versed and experienced in the things that they do. Uh, for example, EA, one of their, their primary subcontractors, GBB. So Gershman, Brickner, and Bratton, they are probably the preeminent uh, solid waste planner or one of them in, in the country, and they do international work as well. They were involved in landfill work out in Guam a bunch of years ago to resolve issues that were out there. Uh, so the combination of those two, quality, quality comes with a price, uh, but the combination of those two differences, difference in hours and the strength of the team, I think is the biggest reason that we see you know, those, uh, the, the price difference that we see. This isn't a, these are not disparaging comments on any of the, the companies that have proposed to this. They're all good. Uh, they have all either done work or will do work at some point in time uh, for Carroll County, uh, for solid waste, or for Tetra Tech in particular has worked on our wastewater end. Uh, so they are all known quantities from that standpoint. Uh, they are all on calls mm -hmm. uh, with the Northeast Authority. We have a list of 12 on-call engineering contractors. Uh, so again, it's nothing disparaging on, on them at all or, or the effort they put forth. It's just, again, the depth of understanding mm -hmm. uh, on their end and the, uh, the work plan that was put forth. We couldn't tell them how many holes to go drill in a field. You know, we, here's what we want, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. That's their way of telling us, here's what we need to do to get there. Yeah. Again, it doesn't mean that that's the cost that's going to come in. If a contractor proposed 5,000 hours for a project and it comes in at 10,000, we have to pay 10,000 hours. Likewise, or counterwise, if they come in with, say, it's 10,000, it comes in at five, there's 5,000 hours we're not paying. Yeah. So it is not lump sum not to, it is not to exceed, it is not lump sum. So we will only be charged for what it, work is done. And that's incumbent on our team, too, to understand and follow what each step work of the work plan is, uh, keep on top of the contracts and make sure we're getting the deal that we're supposed to be getting. Makes a lot of sense. Appreciate all the homework you just said and uh, that you've done. Um, you know, uh, when you make the sale, stop selling. <laughs> well, and, you uh, know, when you look at it, Ed, yeah. the top three are only about 200000 yeah. uh apart anyway. Right. And when you're talking about a $4 million contract, yeah. That's a, what's 2k i mean you know well. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so and i have a tremendous amount of respect for andrew you and your team uh you've been the eight years back in 2014 i said northeast waste or maryland waste what what what, they, what do they do uh but you've certainly proven what you've done over the last eight years that several of us have been here and uh if you're in on this i think it's um it's a good direction to be going in because you've uh, been incredibly um, I think you've, you've been an incredible player in this and uh, we're going to be watched because uh, in in the state of Maryland right now in my travels with Mako and the BMC uh, the colleagues have come up to me and said y'all got 300 and how many acres for what how in the heck did you get that 
So we're going to be watched on this, and uh, I'm going to use a phrase from one of my really good colleagues. We need to get this right. <laughs> Ouch. Except, except for that Loyola <laughs> pin. So, you know, just, just saying. But we'll, well, and we'll, my we'll, apologies. We'll, I, we'll, we'll leave it alone. Jacket, so. just, <laughs> <laughs> just we'll leave that alone. I'm going to make the motion we authorize a contract with the North, Northeast Maryland Waste Disposal Authority for the Carroll County Resource Recovery Park conceptual design and northern landfill expansion by EA Engineering and Technology of Hunt Valley at the not to exceed value of 4.177,949 and 94 cents. Second. Got a motion, guys. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, just yeah. Deb, Please. this money's allocated how? During the budget process, you put uh, $29 million into the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund in a capital project. We've used it for land acquisition, and we have $15.8 million remaining. So those funds would pay for this. Okay. Fantastic. That's not the number the authority needs to use. Understand that. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> Very clear on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, wait a second. Got a motion. Got a second. Any further discussion? Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, see you. Chris, any uh, comments on the phone? No one waiting on the line, sir. And unless Mr. Boki wants to make a public comment, which I don't think he does. Uh, dodging those. I know he is dodging those. Um, anything for open admin? I need uh, approval of the closed minutes from 10 27 2022, legal advice and potential litigation. Please take a look. Motion to approve minutes from 1027. Second. Got a motion, got a second. Any discussion on those minutes? Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Come on up, Wanda. Let's look Thanks at agendas. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Morning. Or afternoon, for that matter. Afternoon, yes. November 7th, we have nothing scheduled. Tuesday, November 8th. I will be attending the Ag Center board meeting that evening on Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, there's a Veterans Day event at Westminster Senior Center at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, put it on my calendar as an FYI, if I can make it there. Okay. That'd be nice. Because um, I'll already be up there at 12 for a salute to service luncheon. Um, with Commissioner Weaver over at uh, Post 31. And then I'll be attending, I guess I'll be in Westminster all day, the Board of Education meeting at 5 p.m. <clears throat> Reminder, Tuesday, November 8th is the time to vote if you don't early vote by November 3rd or uh, mail-in ballot, so November 8th. Yeah. Is today for early voting. Election day is what? Today for early voting by is 8 o'clock. By 8 o'clock is the last day today. Eight or seven? It's Pretty sure eight. it's eight. Okay. On Thursday, November 10th, we open session at nine. And <clears throat> how many of these we got left? Transition of historic preservation. Stop that. <laughs> Commission to planning committee. Adoption of chapter 34 ethics ordinance amendments, which will be questioned as these two have sidebars. What? Carroll County wet water resources element update. CIS Endpoint Security Services Renewal. And Mr. Ripper, he'll be up talking about that along with the Laser Fish Annual Support Renewal. 2022 Pipe Culvert and Storm Drain Rehabilitation. We haven't heard that in a while. Traffic Engineer. Not sure what that's specifically. It's a contract. We have a contract called Traffic Engineer. It's a okay. renewal of the contract. So it'll be dealing with the contract for the traffic engineer from DPW. Change building remodeling of two staff restrooms. Looking forward to that conversation. Um, <laughs> installation of residential water meter vaults on Beesman Road, Hawkins Street, Obrek Road, and Caracara <clears throat> Court, down my area. The purchase of the Liebert heating and cooling unit. And the first quarter FY23 budget update and fourth quarter of FY22 results from Mr. Zaleski. At 4 p.m., 
uh, retirement party for Ms. Auerbach over at uh, the Elks Lodge in Westminster. Commissioner Boucher will be attending. The Goodwill Industries of Monocacy <clears throat> has a uh, event hosted by the Platoon Veteran Services Center at the, at the Goodwill. I'll be attending that. And then Commissioner Boucher, Wance Weaver, and I will be attending the Recreation and Parks Volunteer of the Year program at 6.30 p.m. over at the Arts Center. <clears throat> Friday, November 11th, the offices will be closed for Veterans Day. Gerstel uh, will have a Veterans Day event where Commissioner Weaver, I thought you were attending also. Yeah, I'm attending that as yeah, well. And Commissioner Frazier and Weaver are both attending. And then I will be attending the Westminster American Legion Veterans Day program at 4 p.m. Um, and I know that we just received uh, information on the public schools uh, activities that are happening on Veterans Day, so we can all take a look um, for that Friday. Saturday, November 12th, Land Resource, <coughs> Land and Resource Management Environmental Symposium, Commissioner Boucher and Frazier attending. The Fall <coughs> History Day Celebrating America uh, will be over at the Exploration Commons, and I will be attending that. I, I will try to attend both of them that morning and split them up. On Sunday, Commissioner Weaver, or Wentz, has the No, podcast. it's Weaver. It's Weaver. Actually, okay. we changed that. I did this week. <laughs> Commissioner France. <laughs> uh, so Commissioner Wentz. Him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Wentz Commissioner will Wentz be doing. will be giving his farewell. Wait, what? You're doing this week. <laughs> okay, on Monday. Do it right. November 14th. So in other words, he's been doing it wrong for the last eight years, is what you're saying. What now? He's been doing it wrong for the last eight years. Well, yeah, if you take that into it, you get it. Well, he hadn't done it the Weaver oh, way. Boy. The Weaver way. Using small words. Transit Advisory Council on Monday, November 14th, 3 p.m. Commissioner Frazier will be attending. Tuesday, November 15th, Library's Legislative Breakfast. Commissioner Boucher is attending. I will also be attending that. It's over at the Exploration Commons. There's a local management board. Commissioner Frazier is attending. The Planning Commission uh, board, which will be downstairs. Commissioner Wance will be attending. And then there's a Veterans Advisory meeting that uh, <coughs> Commissioner Weaver and I will be attending. Please get with Vivian. There's a activity over at the CCYSB that morning that I'm going to be attending or participating in. Please, Wanda. Uh, Wednesday, November 16th, Commission on Aging Disabilities. I will be participating. It's a virtual at 10 a.m. The Carroll Community College Board of Trustees meeting. Over to college, Commissioner Wentz and I. I'm attending that too. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, ESAC, the Emergency Services Advisory Council. Commissioner Wance will be uh, participating in that from 7 p.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, or 12 in the morning. Uh, Thursday, November 17th. Pretty close. We have open session. FY22, audit and annual comprehensive financial report. Employment campus solar text amendment discussion. <clears throat> I-1 and C-2, Industrial 1 and Commercial 2 districts, text amendments discussion. And then we're going to talk about ex exercising option to purchase for the Christopher Sterner property through the Rural Legacy Program. Awesome. And then we talk about purchasing radios uh, from Mr. Campbell, Department of Public Safety. I will not be here that morning on the 17th. I will be participating in the Fort Meade Coon Hall Education Resiliency Center ribbon cutting. Um, and it's at Fort Meade. <laughs> so, um, a walk in the park. Wait a second. Is this Thursday? I guess. So, yes, I, I have the same situation as you. I won't be in session that morning. I, I want to let people know that that walk in the park will have yeah. a food drive as well. So anyone wants to attend can donate food. And then there was three. And there was three. Okay. The, the, 
Let's, uh... We can handle it. After eight years, I think we can take it. Okay. Um, Those are the veterans. 5.30 p.m., there's the Maryland. Uh, it's RMI. It's the Manufacturing Celebration, and it's uh, bidding farewell to a very good man and public servant, uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mike... Uh, oh, my gosh. Mike G... I all of a sudden, I forgot his name. Mike. Anyway, mm. I'll just say Mike for that now. the best of Mike us. Awesome, Mike. I don't know. Friday, November 18th, but I will be attending that <laughs> in Marmy West. For somebody. Wow. Uh, Saturday, November 19th. There's a road sign dedication to Tech Sergeant Joseph A. Fahrenholt. And at the American Legion, Commissioner Weaver will be attending and then at 5 p.m. is the sober truth and chrysalis transitional living black light spectacular family dinner mm, that's a lot the trinity church over in tawny town commissioner boucher and fraser will be attending one addition is that really my name? number ninth crazy november oh. 9th at 9 30 uh, farm museum board i'll be okay. going crazy okay. all, all these years that's and then commissioner frazier has the podcast for the farewell podcast with commissioner Sunday, frazier november 20th tune in okay okay we don't go into close we go into adjournment or no it, it, I, for whatever reason it's not in our books agenda it's on the public agenda and yes we have a close for land acquisition you asked for it. 12.30. Okay. I need a motion to... We should go to close for land, land acquisition. How's that? That's good. Second. Motion, motion. second. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All discussion? Any discussion? Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn after land acquisition. Se second. second. I got a motion. I got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Okay. <laughs>